so this is Erica. If you want to come on in. What's that? Is Eric coming? Uh, should be. He said he was. <laughs> oh, what's your last name again, Erica? Griffin. Griffin. Yeah, I should, I should get to know you because you're the playwright resident. Thanks. For real. Across the world on Sports File. American Forces Radio. A couple minutes left in the show, the customary time where we do cheat codes. Send your requests to RegidSportsFiling.com. First, I have an email question from Little Jukebox. Little Jukebox, great name. Says, Rick, I hear you sometimes talk about invincibility and God mode. What's the difference? Uh, live radio there. The difference is invincibility means you're not going to die. God mode is basically, for most games, and then sometimes it's different. But God mode means basically that you're going through walls and you're flying around. Invincibility, probably you're still Does not you walking through walls and you're not flying. Uh, God mode scotch? is pretty much <laughs> do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll have no, an sure email have here okay. from okay. CC Writer. Yes. <laughs> you're like, yes, uh, I am a writer. Which one is it? No, thanks. <laughs> says, Rick, I need codes for, I need the code to get all the teams in NCAA March Madness 06 for the Xbox. <laughs> But I know Whoa. I do. So I gotta be the designated. Player. Going back. NCA March Madness 06 for the regular Xbox. Um, and you know what? I've got it for it. Scotch, Scotch, Scotch. Here it comes. Down it goes. Down it goes. Together. P.S. Such a dumbass movie, but I love it. 907. I love Anchorman. VT. Yes, I do. I sound like Will Ferrell. I love Spelling Bee. Oh, my God. I should say Will Forte. P.S.D. F. 9078 VT. Well, he's got it hooked up. So we have two cameras, and then he just switches it. So when we talk, it'll switch to this camera. Coming up next, more fantastic. He's he's getting really programming. He's getting really sad. It's pretty crazy. You want to come in out of this commercial? Yeah. Alright, uh, you guys uh, will be able to watch a little bit. Uh, I'm recording two cameras because uh, somebody forgot his third one. Excuse me. I forgot what? Camera. I know. Eric A, Eric B. I'm, I'm Eric with a K-A, and she's Eric with a C-A. There we go. And then this is yours, and it's between the two of you, and you can just swing it back and forth, kind of keep it there. Um, we have an extra headset if you want to wear it. If not, you want to just wear it. Or we might kiss. Oh, that's hers, then. That's hers, and then this one's yours. This one is my phone. Oh, I just have this is for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you got the one. Yeah, you got the one right there. <coughs> right. We can do it. Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust. Hey, Chris, can you turn the camera to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, a little bit more, and that's good. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. I just want to make uh, have a camera angle where I have them in the shot as well. Are you sick and tired of your garage door going up but never coming down or going down? And then I can certainly do that as well. What's up? What's up, What's up camera? camera? This. Custom mm -hmm. and doors oh, okay. here They are your one stop shop. are getting no fancy. Garage door openers and repairs. Great service to This is freaking loud, dude. Oh, there we go. Where is this? Ah, uh, perfect. <laughs> I'm like, ah, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Inserts and stoves, chicken systems, and accessories. Custom Heart features the best brand names in the business. Here we go, 20 seconds. Woohoo! With their new keyless entry with fingerprint verification. Fingerprint verification. You, you guys missed all the excitement. He won a video game. They had the video game chat. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to call in. <laughs> it was what was Finding Nemo about? Uh, what was it? Falcons or fish? <laughs> you 
the hottest ticket in town is Theodore Huxtable's best friend. Rudy! Right. Rudy! The coach is in the house. It's curtain call with Eric Ball. Where's Rudy? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Curtain Call, and we are here at ten o'clock at night. Boy, oh boy, when the Dodgers play, we got they play. We got yeah, oh, we got to step aside, boy. There's a lot of sports to do in town. Yeah. Anyways, um, thanks for joining us. If you are staying up late, or if you're one of my students that are <laughs> past curfew, that's yeah, where, where's intern Kelly? Yeah, <laughs> she had homework, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Well, okay. but uh, demerits. Yeah, sometimes you got to push it around a little bit and kind of fit it into the uh, the station schedule. So we're very thrilled if you're listening. Um, if you aren't listening, um, you know, you're probably catching us on YouTube because all of our shows are archived. Go to YouTube and type in Curtain Call with Eric Ball. Yep. And, and I am going to really pr press that, you know, really hard because uh, Glenn Heath here, who's, who's here as always, <laughs> he, is, he is becoming a maniacal madman. How are you? He's a mad scientist. He, he's got us all hooked up with several cameras, hopefully a third here eventually. So we're going to get some... Close-ups. We have the you know the, the wide-angle shot, the panoramic. We <laughs> well, well, this one this one's kind of fun because if you're watching YouTube, you can see little squares around uh, our faces. Uh, I've got Erica Griffin and uh, Eric Amblad here. Uh, we're covered with Eric's and Erica's and yeah. cockroaches and whatnot. And, but I can I must say that these two Eric's are spelled correctly. I'm sorry, you're in the minority here. Okay. Uh, I just want to object that you know. Uh, I think that when you have a woman's name, it should be spelled Erica with a C. You know what? That's true. That's it's true. Just, uh, we're just looking for balance. You know? I, I agree. When it's a man, E-R-I-K. I like the C word. You know, I, 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 I'm, I, I feel special because you know, most people spell Glenn with only one N, and I have two. Well, that's, that's a spare. That, yeah. Well, just in case you need one. It's yeah, like the donut tire of I your like name. I like to switch it up. Sometimes I'm J-E-N or J-E-N. Wait, wait, wait. Does your name start with Eric? I don't think so. Yeah, but you were talking about double N. We haven't even mentioned that Jen Delatore is our guest co-host today. Jen, I figured they would just they would know it because if they're watching this, then the intro would show special guest host. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Jen. Good to see you again. Hi. We got a Chuck Full studio at 10 p.m. at night, boy. And, and cheers. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Uh, to uh, the opening weekend of Cockroach Theater. Yeah. Thank you. And, yeah. and, and your opening production of Nurture, which... Uh, which, by the way, I was just talking to Glenn before you guys got here, and I was saying, I don't know much about this uh, production at all. I, I, I want to know about this, because he, he, let me... Say that cockroach is the talk of the town right now. Um, you've got wow. quite a season. Yes, you've been you've infested. Uh, you've been arts, <laughs> yeah, arts right? district. Talk of the town. It really has been, and um, you know, and it's good that if there's ever like a nuclear bomb in the city too, the only theater that will survive is the cockroach. And the globe. Yeah. The globe always you know, well, survives maybe, fire. Yeah. Well, you have to rebuild it. Cockroaches just go. No said. <laughs> um, but t tell us about. Like, I told you so. <laughs> like, and that's why we're the cockroach <laughs> theater right there. Like, but uh, well, for, yeah, why? Well, yeah, you, why cockroach? Oh, yes, you, uh, because right because you, you know it's like I don't go to a theater to see cockroaches scurrying around. You know, you need you turn off the lights in the theater and all the roaches come out to watch. And, or well, maybe you're hoping the patrons <laughs> scatter afterwards. You know, it means something different for everybody. It does. Uh, it's the Rorschach. Of the <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, now, the uh, the old saw is that uh, the person who gets credit for uh, naming cockroaches is the guy who bought the last pitcher of beer. <laughs> nobody really knows and nobody really remembers the, in the origin <laughs> why it's called cockroach. Uh, but over the years, it's been, you know, We've embraced the ideas of survivability and adaptability. Hey, cockroach has been around for ten years. Ten years now, yeah, since uh, two thousand two. A bunch of young whippersnappers at UNLV <laughs> got really drunk and said, "Man, we can do this." <laughs> Isn't that how all good ideas? But start? you know what? Uh, yes, it, it, it is. The, the perseverance uh, and the dedication and uh, a fantastic team that you you guys have. Uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited and I know, you know, again, there has been a lot of talk uh, about cockroaches uh, this I, for lack of a better term, infestation of the arts district. Oh, because because it's, great term. Okay. It's, it's one of it's one of those things where uh, you know local theater getting into the casinos. But uh, you know a local theater and, and Studio Seven's been uh -huh. doing productions, but it's been production companies coming in and doing shows. They're doing one offs. 
you guys have acquired a space right there in the heart, right there by the Bar Bistro. Free plug for them. Uh, <laughs> awesome Bloody Marys, by the way. <laughs> uh, it, go through the process, because it, it could not have been an easy process for you guys to get everything aligned and set and mm-hmm. get to the point where you're opening a show this weekend. It's been a long weekend. journey. Yeah, and when you, when you look at uh, you know everyone who's on the team now, I mean, we all took parallel uh, journeys, but it all has culminated here. Uh, Ms. Erica Griffin, right here, actually introduced me to Cockroach Theater eight years ago. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, oh, excuse me, seven and a half years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it right here. Uh, seven and a half years ago, she and I had just met uh, while I was doing a production over at Las Vegas Little Theater, and uh, I was looking to do some fringe stuff, but you know, I didn't think it would happen in Las Vegas, and mm-hmm. she said, Ah, come here. <laughs> and uh, she That's was, exactly how she said it, too. I'm yeah, sorry. I think. Uh, and she was uh, starring in uh, Caligula that uh, Cockroach Theater was doing at the Arts Factory. And I went and I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And I started to do theater around here, too. And uh, I was doing a lot of theater down in the Arts District like everybody else was. And I think all of us independently looked at that group of warehouses just north of the Arts Factory and mm-hmm. said, that should be a theater. That would be potential. Right? Uh, it smells of potential. <laughs> and then, um... <laughs> it smells of potential. That's that's the theme for this year's season at Cockroach. It smells, it smells of potential. <laughs> <laughs> Infest. You've just given Diwali his, you know, his <laughs> right. lead line. <laughs> Did you see the picture of him in the uh, on Facebook today? Uh, Somebody posted a picture of him auditioning for Rainbow Company yes. Theater. Yes, and, really. Yeah, I guess he's doing this big article. I, I think it, he just wants to one up David McKee because he's actually been in a production and <laughs> he's just like, ah, I don't want to do. It. But he's, I guess he's of ADV. He was the original director. Of yeah, he was the oh, was first line. director. Uh, oh wow, that was an unintentional segue on yes. my part. <laughs> Good <laughs> job, because I'm usually you know in there with the in your <laughs> the face direct. I just thought it was awesome. It was funny because. I said, what's this for? I was like, are you actually going to do And he guess he's writing an article about the audition process or something. That's, so that's kind of cool. I love cool. how you called him ADV. ADV. Yeah. You know what? Wait, you know, a cockroach brethren, that's how they do it. Let's call, let's call them ADV for now. I like that. It's, it's, it's either that or their antenna, you know, touch and whatever. Sounds like a disease. Whatever pheromones come through. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's only ten after ten, and we're already, you know, he's got his way off talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I think oh, it's at the uh, bell. Where's the Where's the, the Where's the bell? No, we need the bell. Oh, we don't. I mean, I do have my soundboard on uh, <laughs> on here. Does it work? I don't see the bell. I, I don't either. Well, you know what? Oh, I can wow. try opening up a There's second. There's that creepy mug that I don't like. Anyways, no bell. Thing. No, wow, that is a creepy mug. That is a Isn't particularly that? creepy mug. It's like he's got boxing gloves on too, and he's it's naked. Okay. It's this mug, and it's a, like a torso. It's like from the knees to the neck, with no head, and it's a it's a naked tor well, kind of naked torso. And it ha- here, look at this. Oh, like a little Buddha great hip hop song. This is from the knees. Look at that. Hold, hold, hold on. Well, awesome. wait. Hang on. Look at that. There we go. I mean, I put it, that's right in front of yeah, Erica's lower, face. That's lower, great. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't drink from that. Okay. Well, so I, I just. I just. I think it's there to. You, if you rub its belly, we'll get good luck, Mia. Ah, oh, the bell! The uh, bell has Because all I've got is... There you go, Jen. What does the bell do? Well, he started to be a, um, a kind of, if I had a... Uh, I do analogies a lot. And they said, the analogy bell. So every time I did an analogy... Then we did it last week, it turned into something else. It was like a... Like any time somebody said something stupid, bell. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yes. I, uh, my, my Every time we say ADV, we ring it. That's yeah. It. See, I, I can't. I can't do the soundboard uh, because the uh, feedback uh, on here will just be horrible. Yeah. It's okay. We found it. Yeah. We found it out. All right. So listen, I do want to talk because Erica Griffin is the resident playwright for Cockroach. Um, you got a heck of a season coming up, and I want to know all about uh, the play that's currently in production, Nurture. Um, and I want to know all all about everything cockroach because I need to catch up here because uh, from what I know I'm kind of in the in the dark as far as what's been going on over there in the Arts District. So so let's take a quick break and we'll be right back uh, with Curtain Call with Eric Ball. Hang tight. Wow. Hi, this is Heidi Monkeys and 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 monkeys
So if I do the recording on this device, then I could use this as the that would be freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, what are the parts I, I, it, for? Oh, oh. I just don't. I just don't know what the quality is going to be on this nice. recording. <laughs> the guy next to me is Eric. Okay. It's just centering thoughts. Nice. I'm glad that I'm a century. Awesome. <laughs> I, I wrote down names in case I got, you know, stage fright. Really? I used to perform, but I do get a little nervous when I'm myself <laughs> and not a character. Oh, no. Erica actually uh, has some classic stage fright moments. I have had to literally push her on the stage. When she's actually on the stage, bang. But. I hear that's how they how we train trapeze artists in for Ringland, too. Once you get them out there, it takes one fall, one or two. But once you get them out there, you, you're gold. They'll they'll catch. They'll catch because they have to. Yeah. I mean, I that's how they do grab on. Yeah, either that or they're working as a carny for a while. Yeah. Well, you know, we all have to work as a carny. Check out Tom new hot We'll do one more and then we'll come in. There's, there's nothing different to listen to. It's just the commercials and high fidelity. So what's the what, what's the, what's the first uh, play that you're writing? The first play for Cockroach? Yeah. Well, we're doing a, a, a... She's going to have a show in our second season. Mm -hmm. This first season, we're in development. She's running, actually, our playwright development uh, That's awesome. series. We'll do workshopping. That's hang great. Out. It's really just an excuse to hang out with Erica all year long. <laughs> I, I, I get it. That's awesome. We'll do a big dogs. Ooh, raising canes or big dogs? Big dogs. Yeah. <laughs> for, for no reason whatsoever, other than it's one of three commercials. <laughs> yeah, it's either that or safe nest, public service now. Big Dog is the only place where I can find cheese curds. Is that the squishy cheese? The, yeah. the Smiths <laughs> right next to me those cheese curds all over the place. What? I get cheese curds at place almost every other day. cheese. Yeah, do that. Cheese with Dump it in a... <laughs> <laughs> no cash. No. 30 seconds. Uh, and in... You're, you're missing out, guys. This is good scotch. It's delightful. Maybe half Black Maybe half show. Big Dogs has it all. Oh, Eric's drinking. I just caught you on tape. Say it again? I just caught you on tape drinking. Did I test something? Yeah, probably. I'm going to run screaming out of this room. This is Roger Rees of New York Street on the Starcatcher, sending you back to Eric Ball here in Las Vegas. Thanks for tuning in. This is Curtain Call. I'm Eric Ball here with Glenn Heath, as hey. always, and we are. Our guest co-host is Jen Delatore. Hello. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here, my dear. Hello. Okay, so why do I always want to talk to the British accent when you're in the room? I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and with us from the Cockroach Theater, we have Eric Amblad and Erica Griffin. We are a plethora of wandering Erics in this room. And Eric Cox, excuse me. And, and two Three extra ends. Double ends. Glenn and Jen. Ooh. <laughs> this is Ooh. weird. Eric's... Eric's, a vortex Eric's and is, ends. Yeah, vortex is going to be, you know, we're going to suck into this black hole. Of well, and you know what? There's actually two, four Glens in the room because we're we're drinking. I believe Glenn Livet. <laughs> so oh, Lord. And I'm drinking yeah. coffee. Thank you very that much. That is cheating, Glenn. It's going to be a good. It's not cheating if it's this tasty. Now, what did I call you earlier, Glenn Dexterous? Yeah, Glenn Dexterous. Yeah, we were trying to combine that. Glenn and my name. <laughs> yeah. For some reason. And uh, we came up with one that sounded just like something from Lord of the Rings. What was it? It was like... Uh, Eriglin. Eriglin. And I was just like, all we need is a... All we need is a sword that glows blue. Oh, got one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, but penicillin will glow. Yes, it will. <laughs> you know, salve will help with that. Um, oh, I want to talk about Nurture. This is a show that's currently in production with Cockroach Theater by Joanna Adams. And I don't John, know... John Adams. Excuse me. Yeah, John Adams. Oh, excuse me. Yes. John Adams. Begging your pardon, and I, I know nothing about this show, but I do know that there's an awful lot of Barbie dolls on your publicity. <laughs> there is. Um, that's what I do is. know about it. And, and by the way, your publicity is gorgeous. I'm, well, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I come from a marketing background, and I think that half of theater is marketing. Mm -hmm. 
And I, yeah, so I'm thrilled that uh, you guys take that very seriously. But um, tell, tell us about this, because I'm intrigued, to say the least. Well, for, for one thing, let me just say big ups to Ryan Reason, our image director, who is responsible for all the photography. Nice. Yeah, air high five. Yeah, air high <laughs> five to Ryan. Is that the guy that has the studio upstairs? Yeah, he's the uh, general manager at the Arts Factory. Okay. And he is, uh, like, uh, one of the amazing creatives over at Studio West. And he's, awesome. he's now on our team too. Yeah, That's other awesome. companies in the city could take a lesson. He um he he did all of the images of our season that we just released. But I digress. Uh, Jonna Adams is the winner of the Sin City New Play contest for 2012. And uh, right as we were starting up, the contest uh, kind of lost its home because there was a lot of transition. Yeah. In the theater community, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we were happy to make a home for it, and we thought it would be the perfect show to start our um, uh, off with in our uh, theater because we have such a commitment to uh, new and original works. Cool, and uh, it's an amazing, really twisted, dark comedy about two horrible parents <laughs> and their fear of their horrible children. And how that fear brings them together to form a nuclear family <laughs> in the most explosive way possible. Oh, wow. And so it's about the it's Las about Vegas private yeah. school system. <laughs> <laughs> my. Excellent. Precisely. Brilliant. No, that's great. And, and uh, how has it been going? Has it been received well? Has it? We, um, we had our grand opening of the theater and the uh, opening of the show on Friday night, and it was sold out. And... Uh, it was pretty amazing. I am also uh, in the show with Francie and Gordon, and uh, it was—I uh, don't know—I was—I was flummoxed by the uh, the response. Erica, you, uh, you you saw the previews. Well, I've like actually that. been a fan of the script since I heard the reading at the Onyx, mm -hmm. and um, it actually inspired me to write a play that won the LVLT New Works competition That's awesome. because Excellent. two characters carry the whole show, and she uses some really neat techniques uh -huh. of how to pull that off. You've got characters that are fully developed that you never meet. They're never on stage, but they're always close by. So, you know, nice. either the woman at the recitals talking off stage to her daughter and yelling at her, and you're just, you're laughing because if you didn't laugh, you would cry. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's dark comedy. It gets to your nerves. Kind of a power struggle of status. Now, she's not from Las Vegas, though. No, right? no, no, she, but um, she... the contest was right. Las Vegas. Yeah, the, yeah, anybody can nationwide. Anybody can submit. That's great. The contest uh, drew over 300 playwrights from across the nation the first wow. year. So this second year, uh, Erica and I get to uh, sort through whatever happens. It's gonna be like that scene from the producers. <laughs> You're gonna be laying on the couch going, ah, <laughs> "This one is cool. It has a red binder and it's soft." <laughs> no, I don't know. But Ian, yeah, we should say that Erica Griffin is the resident playwright for Cockroach Theater, and congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. We're thrilled I for you. I am finding my bliss in said position. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that That's we're going to, I mean, as as uh, this particular season takes off, we're looking forward to everything you're offering, too, because, yeah, I, I mean, um, in playwright, uh, now, as far as this playwriting contest is concerned, what what where are we at within the timeline of things is it coming up are we right in the thick of things can people still submit so this was um, this was like the fulfillment of the promise of the first contest uh -huh. and uh, the 2013 contest will actually commence on New Year's Day we'll have uh, submissions from New Year's Day until probably about March 1st and then mm. Erica and I and I'm sure a few others will be uh, reading through until the end of March, and then we're going to have a week of public readings. And, uh, from and what, that, are, what are you hey. looking for specifically with your submissions? I mean, is there any sort of criteria guidelines, yes. or do you guys want? Uh, it must be full length. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be six characters or less. Mm -hmm. It also should, in some way, open to interpretation, include Las Vegas, oh, either wow. a line or type of character or that was the first so it could be a, a it could be as simple as a, as a suggestion or a, or a reference exactly let's get married uh, in vegas and it must be a musical as simple as that like, there must be an opening tap number we uh, it, it we, must we start with it was a dark and stormy <laughs> night <laughs> Well, we have a, a whole, uh, there's actually a whole set of criteria. Um, what, what's one of the great um, benefits of the uh, contest is that uh, when you win, you not only get a cash prize, uh, you not only get to uh, have your play produced uh, at, you know, by Cockroach Theater at the Art Square Theater, uh, but it will, upon that production, be published by Original Works Publishing uh, oh, wow. in Los Angeles. That's fantastic. Um, so, 
uh, part so of the criteria the is, is it has to be American and uh, contemporary things like that. Right, so it's not just a performance no, kind of thing. Publishing deal yeah, publishing yeah. awesome. Yeah. This is great. I mean, we should turn this into a reality show. It is. <laughs> you know? It already is a reality show. <laughs> you have no idea what I say on the camera. You know. No, I don't. Really. Those aren't cameras following me all over the place? No. Yeah, it's, it's pretty scary stuff. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You, so you, you have you, no you, idea, Eric. So None. As, None whatsoever. <laughs> So as we approach, uh, you know, 2013, those aspiring playwrights out there, you know, get your get your pencils to the paper and get this going so that we can submit things over to Cockroach because... Oh, well, I, I, have a, I have a question with regards to um, that because um, that's coming coming right on the tail end of LVLT's annual New Works Festival, which you, Erica, are quite familiar oh, with uh, in the past. Um, so it, do you guys expect to see a lot of the same... Submissions, uh, or, or are you going to possibly work with TJ too? You know, I don't know. Um, I, I know that right now, um, Las Vegas Little Theater is currently looking for submissions. That uh, they right. have already announced that they are looking for submissions, and you should definitely go to lvlt uh, dot org to find mm -hmm. out more about their contest. Yeah, I think, and, I think there's there's is, uh, they stop receiving them eh, towards the mm -hmm. end of the year. No, okay. let me look it up here. I got it. Yeah, there's somewhere. And, um, Accepting submissions for the new fifth words. Okay. Yeah, lvlt.org is the place to go if you want to find out about that. And they're looking at accepting submissions through December 31st. Sure. Okay. Which is uh, uh, kind of coincidental, I guess. Yeah, that well, that's, that's, that's why I asked. Because first. <laughs> um, I guess that if you didn't get it in on that, <laughs> get it in on that. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure they have guidelines, too, for their, their yeah. submissions. Uh, so. And we'll, uh, we'll be slightly different, too. Announcing um, more towards December th uh, 1st. What exactly the new guidelines will be sure. uh, for the 2013 contest? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, uh, I think that uh, you know the ground that they've broken over to LVLT and um, what they've done over there has been really amazing. And I don't think that uh, I think that the the pond is big enough, as it were, to um, have two amazing contests. And oh, uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not doubting that. I'm just wondering, you know. No, you're doubting me. Dude. <laughs> I no, no, I, 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 it, no, it's it's one of the it's one of those things. It's like um, <laughs> it's like seeing uh, uh, productions in the area done um, multiple times within a very short time span. Um, oh, right, right, and, right. And 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 I and, and I don't mean to disparage Mr. Ball because, um, it, but hairspray has been done. Oh, believe me, I know. And, and so you know. Uh, just recently done signature at the library. It's Anytime at a con right now. I have to stop the beat. <laughs> uh, it was, you know, we had it in town at... Uh, um, LVA. Yeah, LVA. Uh, well, it's just, Faith and what's it. funny is and, that... And it's a great show. It's one of my favorites. I love the show. music. It's great energy. Uh, and, and and I totally agree with you, Eric. Uh, Eric Amblad, jeez. Uh, I agree with you that there's... Just there's, call me Amblad. It's you know, right. Eric there's, A, there's, Eric B. <laughs> Eric and Eric, <laughs> and, and Eric with a C. And Eric uh, with a C. Obviously, there's there's definite uh, room for theater in this town, and I I, 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 I would argue there's still be still be more. Great, uh, you know, it wasn't like I was reading your index cards at mm. all. My name is Erica Griffin. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> now listen, I am absolutely passionate, as is Eric, of finding more local talent, mm -hmm. more playwrights. If you can hear me, come on out. You know, the more contests, the better. It is for our city. We want to get on the map. On a national level, yeah. having um, a residency with cockroaches—it's a huge step for the entire city to actually put the energy and time into fostering new works, especially when you know the writers committed to bringing Las sure. Vegas, you know. Well, setting the bar for other theaters to take an example. From Absolutely, is what it is. You, you you see plays about other cities in New York, in Chicago. Yeah. Imagine being in New York and seeing a play about Las Vegas. I mean, the locals, the people that decide to move here, how they adapt, how they don't adapt. Mm -hmm. That's great. It hasn't been done. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're, uh, we're yeah. pioneers out here in the desert. Uh, what, uh, what, other, what other <laughs> unique aspects uh, with Cockroach um, did you guys plan? Uh, obviously, this has not been something, you know, spur of the moment. Hey, you know, in a drunken <laughs> fit, let's create a theater. No, this that was the first year. Yes, yes. That, was that was 10 years ago. <laughs> this, this has been a, a long process, and obviously you've had to look at the successes and failures of other theaters in town, and there's been enough of them. Um, what what have you been able to do yeah, what, from other... What is your goal, I, I guess? Uh, 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 yeah, what yeah. is your goal? And, and obviously to foster more local... Uh, new works, obviously that's part of it, but 
you know, what else? What's what's going to make Cockroach unique mm -hmm. compared to, you know, the six, seven other pr theater production groups in town? Well, other than you have your own space. Part, part of, uh, <laughs> part of that, you know, we have, the, the, I, well, I will tell you this, and I think that we will see this over the course of the year. Uh, this space at the Art Square Theater is amazing. It's flexible. It's adaptable. You walk in, you feel like you've stepped into a theater space mm -hmm. in San Francisco, New York, or, or Chicago. So I think that that will truly become part of our identity. But you know, the the um, the whole team of Cockroach has done an amazing job of actually developing the Cockroach identity over the last ten years. And I think that um, for those who know Cockroach, you're going to see us really delve into you know. Uh, I think what what we've done, except now we have a a home to really latch on to mm -hmm. uh, exploring those things. If you don't know Cockroach, I think that what you can expect from us is um, a really eclectic. Oh gosh, I get to I get to <laughs> wax poetic now, don't I? <laughs> yes, yes, you do. <laughs> get the uh, bell ready. <laughs> This season, I'm really excited because we're going to um, explore um, all season what it means to be facing your future. We're growing up. We have set down roots. And now it's time to, what do you do with that next step? It's something that we're doing in the Arts District. It's something that we're doing as a city. And It's a rite of passage God for our little company. Yeah. And so God knows it's what ha we're happening, what's happening in our cities, or in our country. So um, as we explore that, we like to take a look at new and neglected works. So you're going to get a lot of contemporary American playwrights. You're going to, um, three of the shows that we're doing um, this season um, have all been written in the last five years, mm -hmm. um, five, six years. And then uh, we then want to take a new look and hopefully a bold look at plays that you may not necessarily see. Now, Paula Vogel, you know Paula Vogel, uh, but I think that most people, when they think of Paula Vogel, they think of How I Learned to Drive. Okay. Um, the Mineola Twins is an amazing part of her catalog, and it's particularly relevant in this polarized time in politics. Now, that's, so, the, that's the play that's coming up next. And, yeah, we can't wait to open our season with that on October being, 26th. Uh, being directed, directed by, by Joe, Joe Hines. The Joe Hines. Directing the producers next summer, oh, which Eric Amblad is yeah. helping to produce. Oh, oh, I'm not helping, pal. I am. I no, am. He is. There we go. <laughs> he is the producer of wait, the wait. producers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for you, Joe. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Okay. Anytime he throws some uh, poetic Joe's way, it's always, always, always a good thing. Uh, the, the director of Nurture is uh, Jason Aaron Goldberg, and he's it, also the founder of Original Works Publishing, so it's nice that's to have awesome. that cross-pollination going on. Yeah. Matt, you, you mentioned uh, new and neglected, uh, and yet uh, you, the very last show of your so season... You know, I, I'm reading. I'm reading your mind. Do it. Uh, yeah, is, death of a salesman. is death of a salesman? Death of a salesman. Now, I, if I were in New York, uh, you'd be shocked. Especially, you know, down the way to call that a neglected work would be laughable. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that. But you know, we are uh, a Las Vegas theater company, and I think that we really want to speak to our community and. Um, Whenever I talk to anybody in Las Vegas and I say, hey, we're doing Death of a Salesman, almost everybody says, oh, wow, that's great. And I say, do you know what it's about? And they say, uh, yeah, it's about... It's one of those plays. <laughs> Can I tell you it's about <laughs> salesmen <laughs> that, that who that dies? Our audience is already yeah. I think... Can I tell you something, though? That's so true, though. It's yeah. one of those plays that everybody knows and nobody wants to touch. Yeah, and you know, there's a catalog of those so those songs, those plays that nobody wants to touch. Mm -hmm. why, why, why is that? Because you know, I don't know. Because we equate it to a particular. Uh, can I performance? tell you something? I think I think just my own opinion here. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Pers it's a personal creative mountain to climb. It's like doing Hamlet. Nobody wants to. Everybody wants except to Troy do Hamlet. Hamlet. <laughs> except Troy. Who's Hurt. also directing Death of a Salesman? <laughs> <laughs> you see that segue? You see what I did? You see? Seamless. Uh, but, the, um, but seriously, it's one of those things yeah. where it's like nobody wants to do it, but everybody wants to do it. I think that it's also, you know, I, I think that when we talk about neglect, it's also how we approach things. I think that uh -huh. most people, when they think of Death of a Salesman, they think of it when they learned it their junior year of high school, when it was a boring, boring... Yeah, and you didn't learn anything from Boring it. play. Right. And right. it is really an amazing play. And, you know, people think of it... In, in memory, like it's some realist play. It's a it's a dream play. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've never, th- I see, I've never thought of it that yeah. way as a dream play. It is and, a dream and, 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 and so and much ask, contemporary drama is like rooted in the dream aspect of uh, Death of Salesman. I think. I, I guess I need to reread it. Well, they or come, come see it when it opens on. Come see it. I'll be, I'll be in it. You'll see. You got the auditions. Yeah, but the, but yeah, no. Troy's like, uh, uh. Not Cause I'm a salesman. <laughs> Wait, who's drinking what here? Eric? No, I'm serious. <laughs> that's what's, what's in that coffee there? It's it's caffeinated. That's all I got. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I, I guess it's necessary. At Ten thirty at night. For those of you that are listening right now, back east on your iPhone app. <laughs> well, let's let's run this. I want to take two seconds. Let's run down your season. Let's talk okay, about great. these plays. What what shows are coming up? Uh, so uh, we have nurture right. We now. have nurture right now. Uh, tickets are on sale right now. www.cockroach.com uh, runs for two more weeks or three. Two more, more uh, weekends. So two we are weekends, uh, okay. uh, we're Thursday, Friday, Saturday at eight this week, and then Sunday at two, and then the following weekend we're Thursday, Friday, Saturday at eight, and Sunday at two. So you're maintaining the Sunday two p.m. matinees. Yes. Fantastic! Um, can I, you can I tell you something? That's awesome. <laughs> we, I, 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 it, fr- it frustrates me. Uh, you know, they're doing Susical out at the Henderson Pavilion right now. And it's like Sunday night, really? Mm. Sunday matinees, dude. Sunday, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, I, um, it's frustrating. You know, I for for it's years in my nomadic thing. theater troupe and cockroach for years, we were trying to do you know industry nights because we know a lot of people right. in the Cirque shows, and you're like, oh, let's do it on Monday. Let's do it on Wednesday. Uh, you know what the best industry night is? Sunday. Sunday matinee. Sunday matinee. They go to lunch, go see a show, then you can do your thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it was remarkable. We learned that on flu season uh, last year. That was last year? Yeah. It seemed like forever ago. <laughs> it I, I really enjoyed it. Little shots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do I mean, we can leave you guys. Oh wait, is this is this the kissing oh, time? We are yeah. past twenty after. Oh, the hour. let's let's it's do a commercial break and oh, so Eric and I can make out. No, it's not eleven o'clock yet. Oh, okay. All right. The, okay, so we have nurture. Back to the. <laughs> so we got nurture. <laughs> nurture. Uh, then on October twenty sixth, we are going to have the opening of the first show of our season, the Mineola Twins, uh, by Paula Vogel, directed by Joe Hines, starring. Hi, Joe. Shanti Leone and uh, Tara Lynn and Tara Lynn. Berry. Yay. And <laughs> that's it. Hey, uh, as I as I as I start to say this, I just want to say we had auditions a week ago and we had about sixty people come out and it was amazing to see it was flattering to see all of a lot of familiar faces and it was amazing to see a lot of new faces. Yeah, yeah. And there are faces in the season that, that has been cast so far. Very exciting. Just people haven't seen no, I'm it. Telling you, it's dude, amazing. If you build it, they will come. There's a there's word on the street about Cockroach Theater. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Seriously, I, I want what I want the best for you guys. Well, I, I, I can't wait for you to see. Uh, now, why Shanti, did you do them uh, so late, late at night? Sorry. Late them, at night? Didn't you have them really late? Uh, at night? Well, we had one that was six to ten, and then we had another that was eight to twelve. They, they, they did it late at night so people could go to your. <laughs> A cabaret Just evening, for you. Gen, it, it and then go to the auditions yeah, afterwards, <laughs> which is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did not plan that. I swear, but yeah. I thought that was so funny. I was like, "Where's everybody going?" Oh, I found an audition. Oh, okay. What? Decide <laughs> tonight. Come drink. Love you, dude. No, but it was perfect. Um, you. Well, it was great. You know, we, <laughs> it was we, awesome. we were able to let <laughs> we got a little we're let we let people <laughs> to uh, ditch your fab array, <laughs> which was. Fabulous, I heard. It was fantastic. Uh, Thank you. And um, it, a lot of people were, you know, they were getting out of their shows or their rehearsals and they came at the last. Uh, Look, as closer at. Uh, it was an uh, industry production. audition. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's why. Nice. Well, you know what? It obviously worked. You got people to come out and. Uh, I, I, I can't begin to tell you how excited we are uh, about the cast. Um, which brings us to the second show of the season. Uh, which is called uh, Love Song by John Colvenbach, and that's going to uh, be... Uh, and you're directing that one. Yes, I'm directing that one. Uh, okay. It's uh, December 7th through December 23rd. By the way, uh, Mini Waltz Wins is four weekends, and oh, okay. Love Song is three weekends, and it's going to run that same schedule, open on a Friday, it'll be Thursday through Saturday. Are any total performances eight. throughout the course of four weekends? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen, wow. See, now, and can I, I tell, love that. Can that's... I tell you something? I was just going to say that because... Nothing against anybody who, who, who any company that, that caters to short runs and everything, but it's hard to ask the community to dedicate a month and a half of their life or two months of their life and, and then just do 
three shows or two shows or one. Now show. I I I, I will I will argue I will argue on certain shows if but, it's uh, a benefit. Uh, yes, if it's and, a benefit. Yeah. I'm saying uh, kudos, but I I will say that it's just it's not impossible. It's not there's going to be people who will come out in droves. There's and I think that that's fine and it's a choice and go for it. But I just as a performer as well as a director, it's kind of hard for me to say. I know it's it's kind of a selfish personal thing, but but gosh, you know, you want people who are going to want to throw themselves at the piece. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you want to. I, I don't know. You, I'm you, a big fan of if there's five really people or five you, you, people. You, you've got to get you got to give the performer an opportunity to not only develop the character during the rehearsal process, but to get that real live feedback and to be able to. Well, adjust on the fly when you're on stage. Especially and, and these uh, very personal... Um, very small theaters yeah, where these it, in your face. It's not so yeah. much about the individual, it's about the ensemble getting legs. You know what I mean? The whole the whole production itself. Yeah, you um, you both have just described the thought process we went through on that. We've I just created Cockroach <laughs> Theater's mission statement. <laughs> Cheers. just independently <laughs> created Cockroach yeah. Theater. Um, we, uh, we really think that it's... Um, it's great both for the audiences and for the artists. And uh, in face with that, it was just like, well, let's make sure we do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, for a long time, there, there seemed to be um, a trend in this town for doing two-week runs. Mm -hmm. uh, like the fear that, uh, well, we're doing a contemporary play. I don't know if audiences are going to really show up for three weekends. Right. So let's do two. Well, I think that to really give yeah. audiences a chance to really embrace a contemporary play, you need to do at least three weeks. Well, and, I think and, it and defines it, the company, too, because if you look at Super Summer, that's three weekends. If you look at Las Vegas Little Theater, it's usually three weekends. If you look yeah. at Signature, it's a month. And, and you know, you can kind of count on those things. And, and I think part of that is, you know, with, you know, Super Summer Signature, and uh, I hope to see them coming back soon. And they are. Yeah. Um, they are. I'm gonna the, tell you, in there's, yeah. Ooh, there's, do you know something? Okay. There's, uh, yeah. Good times. There's marketing involved with getting the word out, and it, and it goes way farther than a Facebook blast. Hey, we've got a show this weekend. There's there's got to be that marketing uh, marketing, and a, it, with Cockroach being in the arts district, there is going to be that constant marketing because I know that you do the poets and painters on. On Friday, or uh, it's on Saturdays. Yes. Saturdays, yeah. Did it's I just blow your mind? You did. <laughs> did Friday just become you, Saturday? Yeah, you, you, you did oh more than gosh. you did more than Chris Angel ever could. <laughs> um, Amen, brother. Um, but uh, but because of that area uh, with First Friday and poets and painters on Saturday, apparently uh, tells you how often I get out there. Um, it uh, there's there's that constant flow of person to person information which tends to go in my opinion a lot better than hey let's slap a whole bunch of uh, you know posts on Facebook or yeah, you know, ran random things in the city life in the back pages where you know, all the announcements are yeah there's got to be yeah. there's got to be kind of like a the word of mouth is the best advertising but the right word of mouth is what you you need to get out yeah. there it's kind of like you can you can good press bad press it's press yeah. you know but but you want you want the right people saying the right things as well. You know, I, you can't you can't. I mean, you can, but I, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend just putting posters in every Starbucks in the city. That doesn't drive them in. You need to create something that uh, demands you to go see the show. It's a buzz. Yeah, yeah, and, and conversation. I, uh, I I hope that you know what we do is conversation. And if at the end of the show you walk out and you're like, man, that was a great show. Let's have a drink and talk about mm -hmm. the other things we did that day. Then we have failed. A really good show makes you think, man. Let's go get a drink. I got to talk about this show. Yeah, I got to get this off my chest. Well, gotta... and, and conveniently, there's two bars like right yes, next, right next to the like theater. Artifice <laughs> is right across the hall yep. from us, and Bar and Bistro is right across the street. Now, are you working with the artifice? Uh, artifice? Artifish? Fish? Artifice? I can't say it. Artifice. Artifact? Uh, uh, yeah. The artifacties. Uh, <laughs> it's plural artifacts. It's artifice. Um. Wow. <laughs> it's just I, ca I can't reach the bell. Thank there you. There it is. There we go. Sorry. Are, are, you, are you guys partnering at all with any of the other local businesses? Absolutely. You know, we've uh, we've got a great relationship both with Bar and Bistro and with Artifice. Mm -hmm. And uh, today they had uh, our Artifice opened early for a nurture happy hour. Um, mm -hmm. After uh, we closed uh, up our matinee, you could just walk right into the bar yeah. and do that. Um, bar and Bistro 
uh, is packed starting at six before our shows at eight, and uh, that's great. Are we're they, planning to do dinner doing packages dinner with wow. them for the season. So. Because uh, uh, it'll be a good time. Jen, Jen and I you know, did that a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, we were with other people. Uh, it wasn't Jen and I on a date, which. You know. Oh, is this happening? Is this uh, happening? No, this is not happening. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> not as awkward should, as it's going to be later. <laughs> we should uh, we should take a break. Yeah, uh, you know, we, yeah, we should do that because Erica's Erica's been shuffling through her index cards and <laughs> we need to get those reorganized. Absolutely. If you're just now tuning in, this is Curtain Call uh, with Eric Ball. We're talking with Cockroach Theaters, Erica Griffin and Erica Amblad about you know everything Cockroach and what's going on in the arts district and how their uh, their season is panning out. Well, and we've only we've only discussed the first we've two really shows. Only, no, I know. <laughs> Oh, Thank goodness there's time. <laughs> yeah, as we cracked the proverbial cockroach shell, we, we haven't even begun to step on this cockroach. No, what no, is wow. I'm, I'm trying Ooh. hard here. I'm trying hard here. But hang, hang tight. If you want to um, send us a question, you can go to our Facebook page and post it there. You can even call in if you want. 221-SA. That would be awesome. Oh my gosh, oh, that would be amazing. 221-7283 if you don't like it letters. And you can download the uh, KSHP iPhone app for your new iPhone 5. Yeah, just go to... It, it, it is compatible. One of the few things that is still compatible with uh, the new iPhone 5 is the KSHP. Yo, Siri, get me on KSHP. You know what? She, she is very non-helpful anymore. She's difficult. She's yeah. a feisty little thing. Isn't she? Is she, uh, she got worse with I, her and, her and Google got, Maps. She got worse with iOS 6? Yes. You're like looking at it going, I'm in the iPhone 4 ghetto, so I don't get to talk with you myself. You know what? My, my, my phone doesn't talk back to me. It's an Android. I tell it what to do. <laughs> my phone, my phone is my curious. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nimble little minx, ain't she? Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Cockroach Theater. Hang tight. Uh, how you doing on yours uh, there, Mr. Amblad? How you doing on yours? <laughs> I'm really just saying naughty bitch. Yeah, he's a naughty bitch. He's a bitch. I don't think so. We said penis and vagina one week. We didn't get in trouble for that. What station is the number again? 1400 AM. Or they can just download the app on their iPhone. It's usually a clear recession. AM stations. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's great. The app. Is that a BYU cooler? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What's the story behind that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just more interested in the flying sharks. Oh yeah, that's Check out Town Square's new hot spot. Because the boss. He, he hosts True Blue Dad, at 5 p.m. One of my students is there. Uh, <laughs> so, the news we're going to break tonight is that Glenn is in Love Song. <laughs> no one knows. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. I'm also doing Deluxe Let's Blues. Play act like you don't know. I got some Wait, news uh, Ragtag's doing Biloxi Blues for Veterans Day. Are you in that? I'm the drill sergeant. You're too me? <laughs> Shut up! I uh, Oh, did he take one of your roles? One of your three roles? No, that's fine. I'm thrilled he's doing it. No, I'm thrilled he's doing it. But I love that role. Love. I like this Eric Ball character. No, you don't understand. I... Mm, you got big expectations, dude. Up here now. Oh, you have no idea how cool Tim is. I, maybe you do. No, I, yeah, no, no. I was just gonna say. I don't think no. I can do. Oh, don't you do it walking <laughs> stuff. It is such Please a do it walking style. <laughs> I am just, thrilled. Just throw in the. You gotta do my insurgent to me. You're doing to me. You son of a. Good for you. I'm happy. And yes. Hang on. I gotta know. <laughs> okay. So we posted the uh, the artwork for the season right before we got here, and uh, Troy Heard had not yet seen the poster for uh, Death of a Salesman, which is this, and so he was the first comment, he said, holy shit. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a gas can, it's a full gas. For Death of a Salesman. Yeah. 
So, you know, it's fun. My name's gorgeous, man. Thank you, man. Thank Seriously, you. all these are just... I, I your logo. I love it all. I wish you just I. Want to get close to the that's exactly it, and for the, it'll be a treat for those on YouTube. To and see from that. a marketing background, so I, I dig everything. I, I love that. It means a lot, actually. Yeah. I love the triptych in the hallway. They have five each show in triplicate. It's like it's so eye catching. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, we got forty nine seconds. Forty nine. I can do forty nine seconds. Glenn! I do 49 photos in 49. Get one of Jen and I. Fresh tossed signature salads and fresh cut produce. Wait, let me get my card. Oh, you need to redo your card. Oh, you need to redo it. <laughs> this sounds like Walter Nee had licked him. <laughs> Fresh seasonal vegetables and tossed salads. Veritable cornucopia. Veritable cornucopia. I'll toss salads. Good guys. Walter is one of my very first mentors in this town. You know, he let me do the insomnia project for like three years. That was like way long. Check this stinger in. I love this. My favorite stinger. <laughs> this one again? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just my favorite stinger out of all the stingers we have. I love Janice. Thank you, Megan Wheeler. God bless Megan Wheeler. These cockroach people are freaking me out. They actually switched places during the commercial break. I needed to be closer to you, Glenn. I'm, I'm fearing for my life because the be hour of 11 is drawing near. <laughs> and, and Eric A. is a large man. What happens at 11? Uh, I, is that no shirt time? <laughs> well, Eric is rubbing his belly, so... <laughs> you don't want to know. It can only mean one of two things. You sure do yeah. have a pretty little smile. That's one of them. Just smacked my belly and it was resonant. <laughs> it's because the it showed up. It's, it's, the, it's a resident belly of cockroach. Oh, yeah, it is actually. It's a. It's actually a third character nurture. <laughs> in point of fact. Wow. If you're just now tuning in, we're speaking with Eric Amblad and Erica Griffin from Cockroach Theater. Um, you can join the conversation if you like. Give us a call two two one seven two eight three again two two one save s a v e. That's because of the K save? shop. Well, the radio okay. shopping show throughout the week. You can save big bucks if you listen to K Shop fourteen hundred AM. Ding ding. And um, <laughs> we should do the show at later. You're tonight. not drinking at all. I'm not at all. He doesn't need to. He's you know, drunk on I am. I'm, really, oh, I'm oh. very happy. I just oh. have to get high. <laughs> very, 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 very. Erica, did you just in say you need to get high? No, in my chair. Oh, in your chair. In your chair. Oh. <laughs> I just went from down here to up here. Oh, that's the chair that kind of does yeah, it. Was fun. You know, it, it's like a mood chair. Now if you get go sad, down. it just sinks you. Oh. Yeah. There it goes. There it goes. Wow, you're very low now. Well, we were talking about your season, and you know, we kind of got sidetracked. <laughs> kind of got sidetracked a little bit. We well, we have to extend the show because these are our only two guests that we're willing mm -hmm. to. Come. I had to bribe them with twelve-year-old scotch to come out. Uh, and a fine bribe it was. Well, yes. I'm just excited because we can finally. I've been, like I said earlier in the program, there's word on the street about Cockroach Theater and, and their this season. Nurture is going on right now. If you want to go and get tickets to it, I highly recommend it. Go to www.cockroachtheater.com and you can get all the information about Cockroach Theater and uh, tickets for that show there. You can also see them on Facebook. Just search Cockroach Theater and it pops up. Um, the Miniola Twins is coming up next, and that's uh, coming up in October and November. And then we just left off with a love song. By love song is by uh, John Kolvenbach. If you are not familiar with uh, Love Song, I am so excited for you to find it in December because it is one of my favorite plays ever. And you're directing it. I am directing it. Um, because as artistic director, you get that license sometimes. You're like, I love this play. I am totally <laughs> directing it. ka um, So, uh, <laughs> so yes, this is a, it's a beautiful play uh, that um, is going to open on December 7th. And I have the great pleasure of working with uh, four amazing actors mm. in this play. Well, now, I see here Jessica Hurd. 
Brandon Allen McClanahan, oh, Jessica Brandon. Afton, cool. and it just says and dot dot dot. Yes, that's because uh, it was not yet clear whether or not we would have a Harry Ford love song. Harry, hmm. But I am proud and privileged to officially announce that Mr. Glenn Levitt, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. He's a 12-year-old, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Glenn Heath. Uh, will be uh, part of this stellar and amazing cast. Very it was the most fun great. I've ever had in yeah, the audition. Yeah. So. Yay! Congratulations, Ben. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll raise my my Seven Eleven coffee cup in your honor, my friend. Thank you. I I don't have to sing in this one, right? You have to sing the song. Not, not right there. You have to sing the song. Have last to. Song. <laughs> Dun, dun, I get to sing dun, Love Shack. Dun, 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 dun. No, no, that's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> Never. What is the Love Song song? I don't know. I'll sing Brian's song. Were you song. singing the Cardigans? <laughs> no. Wasn't that the Cranberries? No, no, it was the Cardigans. It was the Cardigans. It was the Did Cardigans. You know the, no, it was garbage. No, i got to tell you this story. This has nothing that's to do with anything. That's right. That was garbage. I was thinking, Did you this know, is garbage. Love me. That's Did you know the only love time... Me, love me, love me, say that that's you the love me. I've lost all control. So are you excited, Glenn? I think I'm going to talk to you, Jen. Oh. I've lost all control. I was going to tell them a really funny story that had nothing to do with theater, and they don't want to listen. Because oh. you're Eric B. Aww. Yeah, Eric A. Here's now it's going to be alphabet is alphabetically. Now wow. it's not going to be at all interesting. <laughs> Wait, do you have it? Oh, okay. He's got his iPad. He doesn't have index cards. He's a little bit more modern. <laughs> Wowzers. He's got his story. Digital he's got his story on I'm his a iPad. No, 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 no. no. I need to be centers. Okay. All right, all right. Let's story. No, no, no. It it's story time. It's getting close to eleven. I was just. Why not a story before he falls asleep? <laughs> it is so not funny, you know. So, the only time I've ever been punched in the face was at a Cranberries concert. That's the only thing I wanted to say. <laughs> it's, you know what's funny? I haven't went to a Cranberries concert. <laughs> it was a blind date. Listen, okay, give me that. I have I have a story about a Cranberries okay. concert, and it is also a first. Okay, fire away. Oh. Uh, it is a first and only. Uh, I went to a Cranberries concert, and it was the first and only time I saw a lead singer do a jig <laughs> without any underwear on. Wait a minute. Who misses the Huntridge? Uh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, at the Huntridge? At the Huntridge, yeah. Uh, I, wow. I can say I went to a, a Gloria Stefan and Miami Sound Machine concert. She wasn't wearing and it would, No, you know what? I, I went... She uh, ate cranberries? It was in Fresno, <laughs> California. And, and 90% of the show was in Spanish. And and I'm sorry, when I if you're a teenager in the 80s going to see Gloria Stefan yeah. in Miami Sound Machine, you expect it to be their English songs yeah. because you're... Concerts are never fun when you're the minority. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to get letters about that one. <laughs> From all the blue hairs. I got, I got ding. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, can I just say for I the record... I think that for the record, can I just we say, need to distance ourselves no. from that comment. Yeah. Can I just say for the record, last week I made a comment... Um, Was saying, it last week? I think so. Okay. I, I said something about... Because I tried um, to keep you in check. ...about blue hairs going to a matinee at a theater. And I, here's the thing. I have a total... To anybody who knows me... I joke around a lot. Oh, yeah. But I also have a huge respect for the patrons that fill seats in theaters. Huge respect. I would never besmirch them, ever. And, to, and I kind of upset a few of the listeners last week when I called them blue hairs. Yeah. So I would like to, on the air, publicly apologize, because I sincerely didn't mean would to. You, would you like to retract so, your statement? No, because Good, I want to sound I don't like... Wanna, I don't want to have to edit... The no, no, no. I don't want to retract it. Instead, okay. I, don't want to sound, I don't want to sound like a presidential candidate. Um, so I, I would rather just say that, um, you know, it's one of those things where we try to, you know, we can sometimes blur the line of what should be said and what well, can be said. You know what, I don't, I don't think anyone in this room uh, has anything but appreciation for the patrons that come see the theater. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, as an actor, I want to give a hundred and billion percent uh, of myself in a performance uh, e even bearing my all, as it were, when I didn't have. Yeah. Uh, well, you have totally to missed Eric A. You have, you, you don't you don't <laughs> have to uh, bear yourself. We had three way. shows, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> bear, <laughs> trice bear. You know, uh, I, I was going to say, as a writer, I know it's the same as a performer. Sure. The audience is mm -hmm. the canvas, and yeah. you know, our art is putting something into people's heads that mm -hmm. you know they can take home and. And I think it's yeah, they're a valuable resource. We don't have an old guard in Las Vegas. We, no, I, I, I don't think so. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, people have been working the biz for so long, and well, and I and, and I that's would, what we're growing now. And I would never, I would never purposely uh, um, do that. I, I 
you know, I toil over when I accidentally insult somebody. So I, I just, I sometimes. Uh, I, I wouldn't out worry out about it, Eric. I'm sure they went to bed about five hours. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. But, but. <laughs> That Eric Ball, B A L L. You can find me on Facebook. I don't know why you feel so bad. Well, I just, I just, you know, I got a few emails after that show going, you know, something. Does you. Glenn ever get emails? No, because anyone who knows me knows that uh, I am never serious. They know where to go. It's like going for the jugular. It's they not. Know- Eric, it's not curtain call with Glenn Heath. It's <laughs> curtain call with Eric Ball. He bears the responsibility, <laughs> not me. If, if he doesn't want me to say these things, he should never have invited me to co-host on this show. And there it is. Where's the bell? Ding. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, but here's the thing. Seriously, they know that I'm the sensitive type. So it's just like, well, just send the email to him, and boy, it'll make a difference. And it did. And it did, yeah. And it did. Retraction and everything. Well, like I, I, you, I, you know, I, I feel like cleansed. Roles for older actors. And you know something? That's the only concert I got hit in the face at. The Crabbers. Uh, Anyways. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Full Speaking circle. Speaking of old people. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. No, but I... <laughs> Cranberries haven't had an album in 12 years. They just... They just Can I just say something, though? Did they, I, we'll say yeah. uh, No Doubt. Wing Stadium in no doubt. Lansing, Michigan is where we went and saw this. Wing Stadium. Oh, my gosh. Anyways. Mosh you mean, pits. like, as in Paul McCartney wings? No, as in it's a... Oh, it's as a, in the Red Wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um... Uh, I got it yeah, eventually. Yeah, see it. Yeah, but... But it turned into an instant mosh pit as soon as they started. <laughs> and I'm going, as soon as, soon as they started singing zombie, it became a mosh pit. No, mosh pit at the Cranberries concert. Zombie, this mosh pit, zombie, zombie, zombie. You sounded like Cookie Monster. <laughs> Z is for zombie. It's good enough for me. <laughs> Where did I lose control? Uh, Wait, about control an control. hour ago. <laughs> I want this tape. Elmo wants his tape. <laughs> We should have a battle of the Elmos. Elmo, Elmo, touch Elmo there. He no, has- I'm turning it like that. <laughs> it's tickle me, Elmo, not touch me, Elmo. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> oh my God! So love song. Um, yeah. We yeah, go from so tickle to love song. Then afterwards, we have this play called Qu- Gruesome Playground Injuries, and I need to know about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gruesome Playground Injuries is a lot of fun. Uh, Levi Fackrell, who's also our managing director and is one of the co-founders of Cockroach Theater, is directing that show. Uh, it's better. I mean, he couldn't be here tonight. He was. He was. Uh, he's. Um, how does one say? Uh, obligated to other yes. responsibilities. That's one way of saying it. Okay. He's making his ash. Oh. Mm. I believe that's how you say cash. Oh. Mm. That's how they're saying it on the street nowadays. Is it? I I heard it at a tea party actually. All oh, those young kids. Uh, <laughs> drinking their tea. Drinking their tea. <laughs> drinking their tea. <laughs> They're saying their verbiage. They're chai. Chai. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Chai is so five years ago, guys. Come on. <laughs> Seriously. What, what, is it, what is it now? It's there? it's cool to not like Starbucks now. That's I didn't I, realize that chai was exclusive to... Don't, yeah, don't let Starbucks... <laughs> Starbucks. I thought it was exclusive to a long and lustrous history no, of India. I, yeah. so, so that free plug for Starbucks uh, doesn't really count, because nobody's they, going to drink their stuff anymore. I don't think they advertise here anyways. It's, we need to be worried about sweet tomatoes, big dogs, and raising canes. Sweet tomatoes is delicious, by the way. And can I just say that I would eat raising canes any day of the week off a dirty bathroom floor. <laughs> I would. You, I you're going to get letters now. Is that <laughs> opportunity <laughs> presented? You're, 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 you're going to get letters no, from... I'm not saying I, I do. The health I'm inspectors would. The health uh. inspector is going to show up at Faith Lutheran tomorrow. <laughs> I need to <laughs> inspect your <laughs> floors. Yeah, that's going to show up. Yeah, that's awesome, awesome, man. <laughs> if that shows up in one of your plays... You know what? So I, I, I have to admit, I like taking the bread... Slathering some of the sauce on it, coleslaw, then the piece of the chicken, another piece of bread, sandwich. You make a sandwich? I do make a sandwich. Nice. It, it reminds Actually, me. It reminds me really good. It, it reminds me of Permani Brothers in Pittsburgh because uh, they put coleslaw on most of their sandwiches. It's like a bobby. It's like a, it's like a raisin canes bobby. I suppose so, but uh, Permani's is the quintessential. Ooh. We put coleslaw, coleslaw on again. our. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See how I did that segue? Yeah. That needs to be the bell. The cranberries. cranberries. And we're on show three for Cockroaches season. By the time we get through all of them, it'll be next season. <laughs> Yay! So, and so, anyways, gruesome playground injuries. So, Rajiv Joseph. <laughs> Rajiv Joseph, uh, he was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize a few years back for uh, 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 Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo. 
Oh yeah, that's the one that Robin. That's the one that Robin. Baguette. The Baguette Zoo. The Baghdad. He said Baghdad. He said Baghdad. Well, with all that talk of sandwiches and fries. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. I'm hungry. <laughs> so it's a fun, it's a fun two-hander, and uh, it's basically uh, it, it follows uh, these two people from age eight to age thirty-eight, and we they they basically bond and talk to each other over their injuries. So um, we, as the audience, get to explore our own emotional pain mm. through their physical pain. Oh, and, oh. and it's yeah, and so <laughs> Levi is very <laughs> vocal. Oh. Oh. well, did you write that? Oh. I came up with that out of my own brain. You no, know, we should now. be writing this stuff down. Uh, this yeah. is like somebody, somebody tra- for marketing. Somebody, oh, somebody, oh, watch oh, this next week on YouTube and transcribe it for us, please. Intern Kelly. Oh, that's, that's her punishment for not being here tonight. Now she had, she, you know, truth be told, these, these late night things. I'm not, I'm not gonna be pretty tomorrow either. Thank God for cure eggs. That's all I gotta say. Those, those cure watching, eggs? those watching right now. Yeah, that one cup coffee maker. Just put the little. Yes, sir. I can't drink caffeine. Yes. You know, For so those of you who know me, you know why. Well, and I don't drink, I drink caffeine. So there we go. Yeah, there it is. I just put the Keurig Scotch under my face. is so much face. better than caffeine. <laughs> it is, it's more rousing. It's oh, better right. for the spirits. And, and ironically, the next show after that is called You May Go Now. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I'm not saying, ironically, I probably shouldn't have said that. But you know what I mean. I do. Okay. So, uh, You May Go Now is actually uh, by Becca Brunstadter, oh, and uh, she's amazing. She's a, she is a uh, playwright in America right now who's kind of skyrocketing to the top. Uh, and uh, this was one of her earlier plays. It's out of the original works uh, publishing catalog, and uh, oh, wow. which is also exciting. We, we're really excited to you know try to break out of the dramatist Samuel French. Is it is it we cheaper? Love is it, is it cheaper to do that just out of curiosity? I mean, obviously, well, it's you know, cheaper to do plays than musicals. Period, in my opinion. Is it? I, I mean, I'm, 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 I can be. Uh, although you know, the Death of a Salesman certainly has its. Um, but it's been around for licensing so long. Licensing issues. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's been around forever, and it's a beautiful place, so, you know, why not? Yeah, I guess so. Um, but uh, uh, original original works, they're, they are great. They uh, they try to adapt to whatever uh, company mm-hmm. is, is working. So, you know, to any company, I would recommend um, checking out the Original Works Publishing Catalog, uh, because uh, Their website, right just there. Original um, Works? Uh, it's OriginalWorksOnline.com. So, so, so they're they're play every Monday too. Oh yeah, they're they they're one of the innovators actually in yes. the industry for uh, mm. uh, e plays, um, and they oh, do. Wow. Uh, you do or if you go to Amazon.com every Monday, they have a free play that you can download onto your you know it'd be Kindle fun Kindle app. doing like a Skype reading, you know. Oh a, wow! A, like reading a new play with actors mm-hmm. all over the United States. Can I blow your mind? I'm in talks with my friend in Abu Dhabi to do just that. Wow. Wait, a Abu Dhabi. wait, 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 let me switch, Abu let me, Dhabi, let me right. switch cameras so they can get the expression. Oh. What? Oh my god! <laughs> Mind like blown. Scooby Doo moment. Mind uh, blown. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? Um, can, can I just great, say, great minds think alike here. I didn't really know that Abu Dhabi was a real place until just now. <laughs> I, I know. Did you think it was like Salah Salou or something? Are you yeah. Kidding? Abu Dhabi is part of the reason why the strip is still in business. I mean, come on. Or <laughs> <laughs> at oh, City man. Center. Speaking of Sala Salou, props over exactly. to uh, our friends at Ragtag and Susical that opened this weekend. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have a shout out to uh, little Melanie Redan, who is yeah. uh, uh, one of the things there. And you know something, if you like to color outside of the lines and you like a good time, head over to the Henderson Pavilion. That's where it's at. There, there are a lot of great voices uh, in that production. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the actor playing Jojo Giovanni, uh, I can't think of his name, uh, he was in uh, Love, or mm-hmm. he is in Love, and he was uh, in one of the other shows. Uh, but there's a lot of great voices. Yeah. Uh, directed uh, Big love for Ben Lowy and yeah. Michael Close. Yeah. Go uh, love Ben. Love that. And, and, and Michael's actually in the show as the mayor of Whoville. Um, Who? The mayor of... Yeah. Michael Close. Uh, and, 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 and shouts out to Caitlin Shea, uh, Kirsten Mackey, uh, Michael... Of course, uh, Danielle Raymer. Danielle. Ariana, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, uh, and gosh, who else? Uh, Everybody else who's in it. Kyleen. Um, Everybody else is in it. From Brenna. From Brenna. Oh, yeah, you. Bianca. Yeah, Bianca. Bianca. And, oh, good lord, who am I? Thing one, thing two. David McFarland. 
Horton. Yeah, that's David. Here's a who. Lysander. You know what? Ah, uh, Lysander. Uh, the places you'll go. Okay, uh, so so you may go now. Um, all right, and followed closely by Death of a Salesman. Now that's coming up. That's in April and May. So we're coming full circle into the spring then. And uh, let me just say that. And then uh, in June, uh, after we're done with the season, that's when we'll be doing the production of the 2013 uh, play of the Sin City New Play Concert. Now, are you guys wow. thinking of doing anything late night, or you know, uh, oddly enough, am I you know going to have my mind blown again because? <laughs> Because I actually talk to you every once in a while, Eric. <laughs> May have. Uh, actually, what's exciting is that while I could talk to it, someone better to talk about it is sitting right next to me. Um, we are really looking forward to our late night programming, and it stems from some of our daytime programming. We're going to be doing some training programs uh, starting, we think, in October, including the Playwright Development Program. And out of that, we will have workshops and so forth. Hey, Erica. Want to talk to us more about the amazing workshops that are going to happen? Give her a moment to yeah, switch cards. Do. There we My go. Name. Okay. <laughs> her name is Erica Griffin. I love she those She's sitting next to hilarious. Eric Amblad. <laughs> well, yeah, I put some thought into how it's going to go down, and I think, you know, for those people that remember the old um, Catherine Giannakoulis Park for the Arts what? days, <laughs> we had a good thing going on there where we had workshops mm -hmm. every Sunday, and Local actors and writers got together and we just, I mean, laid jammed, it all out. Right. And we jammed. Played, yeah. Yeah. It was like music mm -hmm. because everyone had their own style that they were bringing. The actors were so trained that they would read something for the first time like they had read it and rehearsed it for months, you know, yeah. really good cold readings. There's not enough jam sessions in the city. That's probably what there we're are some working. improv jam sessions. Well, so. improv jam okay. sessions, but I'm just saying, like, like if you want to be a playwright, or if you want <laughs> to be a director, or if you want to, you know, there's not enough opportunities unless you're like enrolled into a class at UNLV or something. You know. Yeah, and that we want to, you know, we want to let the Art Square Theater be a playground for Absolutely. everyone. Absolutely, great. Everyone. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, what's um? We also have some uh, uh, cool programming coming up. Also, we've been in talks with some of the. Uh, the fine people at, uh, who are performers in uh, Cirque and other places on the Strip that like to have those extracurricular moments. Yeah. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be seeing some of those shows pop up also. Nice. Like like the 12 p.m. show? Yes. Uh, the 12 30 show. Is 12 30. It was called. Uh, sorry. Gotta love Benedict. Half, half hour. Miles, all those I, I, I Hi, Jimmy guys. Slow. do love both because I think those are the only two uh, still in town that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we need um, to, we do need to take a quick break here. We're gonna we'll come right back. Yeah, we'll we, we just had Dad come in the room and tell us <laughs> we needed to take a our producer Chris. We have to uh, we have to switch the CD over where that we're uh, audio taping the show. So we need to take a quick break. So if you're just now tuning in, we're with Cockroach Theater, and this is Curtain Call with Eric Ball. Hang tight. We got through all of the season in that set. What's that? We got through all of the season in that set. See? How about that? Good. Now. Now we can have fun. Now we can stop commercial time. <laughs> we can dig in. I'm like really too hot. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think we've really gotten too much into. Uh, Sorry. I don't think we've done too much of a commercial show for Cockroach. No, really. We, yeah. We've been off track with you. Oh, yeah, but, you know, that's Let's fun. This, this is this is this is almost as fun as the improv show. I feel bad that I'm not giving you a chance. To, is this Hannah? Yes. This is cool. Yeah, the, it's beating out a little. The best commercial for us. But yeah, I had this. Really oh, cool I like stuff. those people. I like to hang out. With them. That's fun. Yeah, I'd like to have a beer with that. Uh, that's that you know. Why this is a presidential campaign. You had locusts. Oh, I gave it up in '97 because I was drinking a pot of coffee at night to go to sleep, and there was one night where I was waiting for it to brew, and I thought to myself. This is I not see, I, <laughs> caffeine. I can fall asleep after drinking a couple of cups of coffee, mm -hmm. uh, and yep. I've cut and I've cut back to about a half a pot a day. So, um, yeah, no, I I would drink at I would I would go to uh, in they didn't have a Starbucks in, in uh, Harvard Square. They had an oboe and pan. I would get four tall triple venti vanilla lattes just for my like you know after relax. dinner thing. Yeah. And then later it was like. Oh, so you'd you'd love those little uh, Keurig. Uh, yeah, I because I, I have the Nesca, I have the Nescafe espresso Nespresso machine. Mm. Oh, My dad that. came out with these like chocolate covered mint espresso beans, and he's oh, like, "Hey, you yeah. want one of these?" And I was like, 
Of Why don't course. You just offer me crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I worked at Caribou Coffee in college, and let me tell you, oh, the yeah, chocolate covered dude. coffee beans. When you were studying for exams and stuff, you just—they're amazing. Oh, oh, they're yummy. They're delicious. Delicious. And you find them in the crevices of your teeth an hour later. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you, it, thank you. You know, and if you find them in the crevices of your couch, you, thank you, you thank, thank so you for as well. Yes. When I saw Train Spotting, I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> He's diving in the toilet for coffee. That's it. <laughs> That scene towards the end with the baby crawling on the ceiling, that was me going cold turkey. It was bad. But 97. 97. Wow. 15 years. Yes. Who'd have thought? Chemical free since... No, that's not true. No. Chemical free since... Sutton since PM. HP. Kurt called us Zarek since our... What? <laughs> it's the Justin, owner. what's up? <laughs> it's the owner saying, what the hell are you doing drinking? Excellent. Like you want to talk to cockroach people? Are you texting to tell him to call in? No. no. Say it again? Checking on my son. Well, if it's, that's usually what happens. Our guests are like, bro, call me. This you, shows. Oh my gosh, hang tight. Up. I'll certainly put you on and then we'll talk about it, okay? Got a little more commercial. Can you hang tight? She's still living. Oh, that. that makes wow. me feel... Really? Yeah. Well, she was in uh, Joseph uh, with us uh, out at the ranch. Her... So she, she's in the biz too. Um, you yes, got a caller who wants to talk to you about hair, and and it, <laughs> and it and it and it and it pisses my wife off um, because she's following my my ex wife. Ex wife is very artistic. Like, oh. Yeah, not married. Uh, my ex wife is very artistic, but it, by the way, very private that way. moment right there is why you should come see nurture. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but but the fact that my daughter is doing theater. It's probably just the best little. <laughs> wait, hold on. It's probably the best little uh, that I can give is because it, it, and she's impassioned by it. Uh, she's doing you know, she theater at her. Yeah, uh, she she's in uh, Man for All Seasons at her high school, and she's. <clears throat> it's great. Uh, she's only she's only a sophomore, but one of the highest level in theater at her high school because yeah. which high school? Moapa Valley. Uh, and we're back. Um, this is Curtain Call, and we are talking with Eric Amblad and Erica Griffin from Cockroach Theater. But during the break, we got a call from what? Justin. Justin wants to talk to uh, uh, Glenn about hair. Oh, wait, Justin, wait, which Justin are you there? is this? Are you there, Justin? I am there. Hello. Hey. So, what, what did you want to talk about? <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't know if there was uh, Glenn Keith memorabilia from, uh, from hair available. Um. <laughs> I, I can oh, give you I can give you the nipple clamps that I used if you're so oh, inclined. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's what you missed, Eric. That's, I, I, I always miss the the, the fun thing there. Did Did you get a chance to see the show, Justin? I, I did, sir. Yes, I did. Fantastic. What did you think of the show? I heard it was really, really, really good. I had a blast. I went twice. Mm. It was great. Uh, you, you 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 came on first Friday, is that right? I came on first Friday. Yeah. It was yeah. Quite herbal to me around this. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, representative of the time and the era, that's for sure. Uh, I have to ask, what are you doing up at 11.15, and uh, do you listen to the show often? <laughs> um, actually, because it's 11.15, it's why I'm listening to the show. Normally I miss it, but I'm working on a set design for uh, Coronado High School at the current moment. Oh, well, let's plug your show. Which uh, show is Coronado doing? Um, we are doing Romeo and Juliet, which... Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then the, the, the set design I'm making is for Beauty and the Beast, which is seven months away. Oh wow, that is awesome! Uh, it, big props over to Kelly Burroughs and Coronado High School. Yeah, yeah. you know, gotta, and, gotta and show the love to our local. And high school and, 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 and I and I, I, will, I will give my it's props out to, to to Justin. Um, uh, does a lot of great behind the scenes. Uh, work. Uh, well, Justin's Superman, yeah. dude. Yeah. Seriously, seriously, dude. Um, I, I didn't know you very well before before uh, Super Summer Theater this last summer, and and you're Superman, man. I don't even think you sleep. You're awesome, Justin. Uh, I do. You can't. You gotta. You know, I just got finished helping Jen with her uh, her cabaret, yeah. and that was great too. And you know, just helping people with their dreams is a good uh, good way to. Well, what about your dreams? You know what, Cockroach <laughs> Theater, that should be your helping people with their dreams. No, it's Justin's. Well, no, he can copyright it. You just pay royalties. <laughs> <laughs> just license it. Yeah, just license it out to Justin. I would do it that way. 
or no, helping people with their dreams. Beauty and the Beast. There it is. Done. I like that. There it vision. is. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Come see a candlestick. Uh, it's it's dreaming <laughs> about your just. Uh, it, it's late for us here. Uh, any 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 questions uh, that you might have for Cockroach? Uh, because uh, uh, they are our feature today, not me. Even though I do appreciate the uh, shout out. No problem, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sir. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm very interested in what you guys are doing. You know, we're the the Ruby Foundation is trying to work on the same type of deal that you guys are doing, and we kind of look we look up to. Uh, theater companies like yourself for what they're doing, so I appreciate wow, you guys. Wow, thank you. Wow. That's yeah, you guys very humbling. Fantastic and, and show, showing people how it should be done. Justin, I, I, I... Respecting the art. Uh, a lot of people who are listening right now uh, may not know the Rudy Foundation. Uh, you want to give us a little bit of uh, information? Uh, the Rudy Foundation is... Because it's uh, not Rudy Huxtable. <laughs> well, no, the Rudy! Rudy oh, Foundation! Rudy. Any opportunity to do the Bill Cosby impression, I swear to God. I no, knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Jello pudding pops! Not even close, Eric. <laughs> Like you know, butt. just uh, wait. You know, Justin, you do a, you do a fair, you fairly go 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 Joe, the walrus. Because <clears throat> uh, I, I know you do a fairly oh decent uh, Bill Cosby <laughs> impersonation as well, Justin. So feel free uh, and let us know about you, you the just actual said, Rudy. Tell us about the Rudy Foundation. Let me talk. Segue into do an impression of Bill. Cosby. I'm on my second scotch. Leave me alone. Oh Here we go. Oh, it, oh, that's your. Second. Well, at least tell us what the what the Rudy Foundation website is, so we can go there. Yeah, please. Uh, www.rudyfoundation.org. Uh, Rudy is just like the movie that you see on TV. His wife, Cheryl Rudiger, started the whole thing eight years ago, and we're in the works of getting our production company up and running. That's great. And and, uh, uh, and Eric is quite familiar Rudy. because uh, uh, Jessica Rudiger is uh, one of his students. Oh, my students are very faithful. Yeah. Yeah. She's fantastic, too. <laughs> So is Cheryl. Everybody over at the Rudy Foundation. Everybody yeah. that's associated. Cheryl is great. She's just, every, she's just everybody's cheerleader. Amazing yeah. people. Amazing, amazing people. She's great. Well, listen, Justin. Um, respect respect to, with the Cockroach Theater for what they're doing. You guys are great. And, and can I... That I appreciate. Can I piggyback what you're saying, Justin? I want, I want to say something just from what I heard. A good company is generated when you have a good team. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, there's... <clears throat> when you get people who believe in the product, who will support the product, and will put time, blood, sweat, and tears into the product, good program. Then you have. That's why I think that uh, theater companies are have longevity in the in this city. Las Vegas Little Theater Signature yeah. Productions. You know, they're they're people that want to invest their passions and times into these things. So uh, I mean, you, you cannot say. I mean. People will uh, come and see Death of a Salesman or not, but regardless, you cannot say that the people that are are attached to these projects aren't passionate about them. So definitely, like like Glenn is very passionate about love love songs. So I am now, now that I know I'm in it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and he was very passionate about hair too, but that passion has since wilted because. Uh, <laughs> You know what, I, 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 I will say, Justin, I, I only had a few rehearsals for that production. Uh, I, it, much like Sweeney Todd, I was asked to step in at the very last minute. and We need you to play a drag role. Yeah, and, and that was, it was like, I get to, I get to do what? <laughs> Here, Glenn, we need somebody to play this. All right. Here's the dress. And, and, and you know what, and that, uh, Andrew Wright had no idea what I was going to do. I showed up. I showed Only up. Andrew Wright. No one knew what I was going to do. Uh, not even. Not even uh, my my uh, my significant Kelly Ward. Uh, I showed up Friday night uh, in, in for the first of two shows, and I came up to Andrew. It looked like I was wearing a, a purple turtleneck. I had a lavender coat. Uh, I shaved my legs, folks. That's how dedicated of an actor I am. For three uh, shows. For three shows, I shaved my legs. I shaved, bet you shaved my right face. Now. No, actually. Uh, yeah, I did. I did sit next to uh, your significant. Yes, <laughs> and, and she and she and she was surprised as well when I opened up that coat and there was nothing on my neck other than a little dicky and nipple clamps and a little mesh pair oh, of underwear with what? vinyl 
pouches. Happy first oh, wow. Friday, everybody. Yeah. You know something, kids? That's why we get into theater. Good promotion. You know what? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't get to play those... I, I I've love, got to theater for the nipple punch. I love those oh, fun Lord. characters. No, I really do. The, you know, Eric, you should know well enough. You cast Tomorrow me... Tomorrow I'm talking Susical with my students. You cast me as the dentist, uh, Eric, and, 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 I, and I have to say, those are the funnest roles. They those are, those juicy are. character roles, they may not have a whole lot of... And I was dead by the end of Act 1 in Little Shop. I didn't care. It was a great um, death. It was, a great death. It, it, was, it was such a fun role. And I, and I, 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 I hate the fact that I, I get stereotyped a little bit as a creepy... Can I tell you something? People play to their strengths, and you do a really good job of bringing out unique turns and twists to characters that are usually put into the ground a certain way. And, and well, and, so, and, I, and I appreciate that. And that's... can I just say that that's why you get cast in those roles? It's not because they. Well, and who do we know that's creepy that will show us? Can I tell you I'm starting to feel like I screwed up on Love Song. Now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the thing. He's not creepy. Can I tell you I've, something? I've already accepted the role. Having Sorry, directed I'm Glenn. Already off of it. <laughs> Having directed do? Glenn and Jen, I, I can say this about you too. You will never have to worry about these two. They are consummate professionals. <laughs> Yo, know, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about any of the four that I cast in Love Song. So I'm pretty excited. I apparently have to do no work now that I've cast it. Is Glenn's uh, character I, I, creepy? No, 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 not at all. No. He's, he's oh, endearing. Um, he's empowering. It's amazing. Well, every every it. once in a while, you know, I get to play, uh, you know, John and Oleana, and he's mm -hmm. an endearing character. <laughs> well done. On that. No, he is. Uh, and the way that you did it, absolutely. I, that was not a fishing for a compliment, but thank you. I don't care if you're one fishing. Um, Oliana, I, you know, I don't put this out there. Oliana is the reason why um, I approached uh, Joe Hines to direct the Mini Ultimates. I had worked with him before, mm -hmm. but it was because he did an actual subtle job with Oliana that I was like, oh, he's good for uh, Mini oh, yeah. Twins. Because Mini Twins, I think, can it veer can off into in polarizing yeah. directions. And it's really about how we're all, you know, mm -hmm. alike. And I, I talked with Joe about that because yeah. he said very much the same thing. Uh, because Oleana can be, oh, she's right, oh, he's right. And, and that was one of the fortunate things, uh, at least, and, and obviously you saw the same thing, is yeah. that uh, he didn't want it to be polarizing one way or the other. He wanted everyone to go out afterwards, have a drink, and say, what the hell did we just see? <laughs> and, and discuss it. And, and, and that was even something that ADV, uh, you know, came across in, in, in <laughs> ADV. <laughs> because, uh, no, no bell on that. He actually, I mean, he actually wrote an article in the, in the RJ indicating, you know, once the show had opened, um, that he thought it deserved some more discussion, right. and, and and I I thank him for that because it is a conversation. I I, I, I don't I don't, do, I don't do theater for the reviews. I love it when somebody likes what I've done. I like uh, reviews that bring audiences to the theater. Thank you. Yeah, and, 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 and however that needs to happen. Yeah, I, I, and I, people want to talk about it. We were yeah, yeah. That earlier. I, I don't think anyone in this room is selfish to say, "Oh, come see me because the show's all about me." Look what I wrote. Look what I directed. Look what I produced. You know, look how awesome I am. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm pointing at Jen when I do that. <laughs> uh, you are awesome, Jen. You are uh, awesome. You are awesome, Jen. And, and <laughs> my camera just broke on you. Just oh, what no. happened? It just it focused in on her. I can't focus in on anything else. Ooh. Can it focus no, on me? No, no, no. It's it's fixated. It has a crush. Meanwhile, uh, Justin's still on yeah. the other line. Oh, is, that, is that why I keep hearing yeah. weird feedback? Yeah. He's trying to make drawings of castles. You, you should be here, uh, Justin. I want to uh, say uh, to Justin, you know, thank you so much uh, for all of your kind words. You know, uh, as uh, as Eric said, uh, Eric Paul. This is Eric. <laughs> yeah. Eric Paul said, uh, you know, the the um, the best thing that happens with companies when you get like minds together mm -hmm. with similar passions pushing forward. And um, we have certainly found at Cockroach Theater that. Um, it's amazing to work with as many people as we do. You know, Erica and I are but mere facets of a larger gem, if you will. And uh, we're all very humbled to be a part of it. Well, so I think, keep I pushing think, forward with what you're doing. I think the downfall of any theater company or the downfall of any theater production is when one person um, wants to act as the the head of King of the Mountain. Oh, good God. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's the downfall of anything. If you're trying to be king of theater, it's not... You've 
completely taken the rug out from underneath you and everything that you're doing as far as your efforts before you even start. It, it, it needs to be about ensemble, needs to be about the piece, not about you. It needs, and and uh, I'm glad to see, over the last five years, I think, we're seeing a shift to more of that mindset in general. And and can I just say I'm I'm elated. I'm I, I, and, and and Justin, I think, is uh, exactly part of that. Uh, yeah, uh, that that shift, if you will. Uh, I've I've had the opportunity to work with Justin on a couple of shows, um, and, and and shows succeed on a number of levels. And one of the key things that most performers, well, I I like to, you know, acknowledge the crew. Uh, you know uh, the ones that are you know moving the set pieces, the ones that are helping with quick changes, the ones that are doing all the thankless tasks, uh, you know wrangling kids, you know whatever it may be. And Justin is one of one of those. Um, and, and you know, you yeah, didn't, you're you one didn't, of the nameless rabble, Justin. Yeah, you, 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 you didn't you didn't you didn't call to get a thank you from me. Uh, and, and 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 if I didn't thank you, uh, you know. With Joseph or with Annie or or you know for the mm-hmm. sangrias or whatever. That's because you're a cold person. I am. I'm a you cold, heartless. If you didn't thank me in a way that can be spoken about on air. Uh, <laughs> we've been waiting. <laughs> wow. On the air. We've been waiting. You know, I, I I've already been prompted that I have to kiss uh, Eric A on this show, and you know, it's this is this is no no no, no it's making out. Ew. Uh, how did this happen? I don't know. No, that's 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 Eric A. He's like I cast you in the show. Pay up. No, no, oh. no, no, that doesn't happen. No, that does it, it, It's merely an independent coincidence. It oh. may happen. It doesn't happen, though. It doesn't happen that doesn't way. Doesn't mean I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it might mean that, but I mean, you know. Good on you. That's yeah, all I'm saying. So, anyways, this is a reminder that Sideband's playing over at Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, which no, you know, there's no segue. None of the characters are gay in that show. No, no, no. no I just segue. no. I just I, I purposely segue. I have my list of things I want to mention. Um, and and uh, I, I I wish I had uh, printed out the list. Um, poor Richards players. Um, uh, they do the LV Tap show. Yeah. Uh, ben Lowy, Lysander, mm-hmm. and Max. Uh, they've organized you know a list of all the shows that are going on. They have a great list. Yeah, it's you like, know uh, what? It's great. Uh, it's at their uh, Poor Richards Players Facebook page. Yeah, uh, and, and please look that up so that you can see all the shows that are going on. Uh, I will give all the uh, props mm-hmm. to them for that research and, and doing that. And listen to the LV Tap show. I love uh, great. Be, yeah, they're great. A lot, lot of fun. Um, you know, they haven't invited me on in a while. I don't know why. You know, I've never been on. I need to. I need to. Well, they haven't been on our show. Uh, well, Ben has. Well, uh, yeah, but not because he was Ben, but Maybe because he was directing podcast. Susicles. Well, you know, Simul- oh, you know, you know how that like in comic books where DC stars. and Marvel. Yes. yes. We need to do a DC totally. Marvel type thing and have a live show at the same time that, that LV taps. They can record. The Flash. The, I call it LV taps. You're can, Aquaman. LV. <laughs> screw you. <laughs> <laughs> You're Robin. Uh, ah, no! <laughs> you can do wear the green tights. At least I can talk to fish. Um, <laughs> Who's Kitty Pride? <laughs> Jen. Wait, you know what? You know, no, Kitty Kitty Pride. That was just one of her because she had like multiple names. Oh, I know. She. she could be Shadow Cat, but Thank I'm just saying you. Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride. Wait, right. we got we got like geeky really. Oh, uh, by the way. Oh yeah. Speaking of geeky, somebody somebody won a video <laughs> game right before our show here. <laughs> no, you don't. You gotta set it up. So all right. Like the show. So so I'm setting up all this camera equipment. I am setting up all this camera equipment. <laughs> you know, Eric forgot to bring camera number three. I brought my two cameras, my tripods, my computer, all my stuff, so that production value could you know. But Eric, because of Eric, production well, I, value not quite so high today. I just forgot it. It's on my counter. How do you f- I, it I was on your counter and you it. forgot. I was running late oh. and I forgot. I mean, it happens. How do you run late for a 10 p.m. show? This is show? why my wife and I don't have kids. If I no, stop no, 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 no. You and your wife. You and your wife don't have kids for other reasons. We don't. Because you have. I beg your pardon. I get up out of cranberry school. We we. Ever Jeez. since that hit at the Cranberries concert, yeah. uh, we would have had kids if I found more room in my house. I, I don't, e- I don't even know where this story was going. Um, Do you have to hit me, Justin? Help me out. Where was the story going? No, uh, video games. Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, 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 I was setting up the 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 video for the show, and 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 the the show prior to Curtain Call tonight was a video game talk show, 
and they were talking uh, about the Finding Nemo new yeah, game yeah. coming out on PS3. So, so the the trivia question. This was the trivia question. What was the Disney Pixar movies video Finding Nemo about? Was it about fish or was it about falcons? <laughs> and I went, oh, fish? I, no, 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 fish or falcons? And I went, fish or falcons? And I was like, I know this. So Eric calls in. Eric Ball calls in while I'm setting up video for the show. Eric wins the video game. <laughs> I don't Eric know was PS3. probably yeah. He was Did probably the old. No, I just said. No, it was so funny because he goes, okay, is it fish or is it falcons? And I go, well, I believe it's fish, Bob. And he goes, well, that's right. Okay, hang on. And, and, and of course, like, and of course, Eric didn't turn down the, the master on the, on the board here. <laughs> so there's that echo, that annoying echo that you hear when people are listening to themselves on the radio when they win a contest. <laughs> that was Eric. Before our show, Eric didn't punch down his own microphone. So it was like, Thanks, well Bob, 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 Bob. Today, 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 I, I, I feel, feel, feel like, 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 like the greatest, greatest, greatest man in the universe. First, first. Oh, whatever you know. Lou Gehrig's speech was, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get me a PS3. That old saw. I. <sighs> but I will say, I do like Finding Nemo. Um. Uh, on the Finding Nemo kick, there, I, uh, I took my daughter to see Finding Nemo in 3D. Ooh. Oh. And and there was no difference. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Finding Nemo with having to wear those glasses that put those really awkwardly placed cuffs behind your ears. So, so it was it was Finding Nemo, but annoying 3D effects. Yeah. Yeah, just you know that headache afterwards. You know, I am so annoyed by 3D. Is anybody else like annoyed? There, there, there have been. All right, listen. No, I love it. I understand the annoyance with 3D, and it comes from porting 2D to 3D. Yeah. But, but the 3D, 3D that are in 3D are uh, mesmerizing. Like, I think that some of the best cinematography in the last few years Avatar. was on Hugo and on Avatar. Yeah. It is astonishing. And quite honestly, I like me some of that. I, 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 I will be honest, I picked up a second camera. Um, and I found my second one inexpensively. I almost bought a 3D camera that was fairly inexpensive. And I was like, how awesome would it be if Curtin Hall was in 3D? And then I thought, that's kind of weird. Yeah. I just really know. That just know. blows like my just, mind. It really ne- needless to say, I didn't do it in 3D, but for those of you watching, oh, there you go. That was 3D. Glenn Heath is <laughs> the next James Cameron. <laughs> We should do Let it. us go to the abyss. Like the chronicles of Curtain Call and then put it down. Wait, 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 yeah. Here. Thank you, Eric. Oh, you oh have to God. watch this on YouTube. Dear, we've all been waiting. I'm the king of the world. Oh. Do you feel that? Will you draw me? This, this has got I a feel that. too bizarre for me, Erica. Speak I, so um let's talk about First the medallion around your neck. Oh, right? was, oh yes, I know that medallion. No. I have seen the uh, trifling peaks of finery. That's what they're called, <laughs> trifling pieces of finery by Sonative, who's Chris uh, Reitmeyer. He's in Portland right huh. now. He, But he was in Vegas for a long yeah. time. They're made out of things that people discard. Such as, oh, bottle, bottle caps and baby food jar lids. It doesn't Absolutely. look like that. It yeah. looks like I mean, that medallion from Indiana Jones that he burns his hand out. Oh. I know. I, I, I will say that this is one of the envies that I have of Because you're of, gifted one. Yes, you are gifted one. Uh, and a lot I will have to gift you. Uh, a, lot, a lot of my friends uh, with the Insurgo Theater Movement, uh, may it rest in peace, uh, a lot of them have uh, these And they got them from the KGPA. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. basically yeah. if you're a descendant of the KGPA. I, you know, I, cool and serious. I've got got cool no, you know what? I, I, spent, I spent a few nights at the cage, okay. and uh, but I came at the tail end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember those nights, Glenn. Do you remember those nights, Glenn? I don't. Which is why. That's why we're drinking scotch now. I kind of don't know what we're talking about now. Oh, Oh, we, you don't know about no, the KGB. We, 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 we were talking about it earlier, but yeah, we, they, we lived in a house. broader perspective. Oh, you actually lived there. I was a resident. That's right, that's right. I forget you yeah. you lived there at the cage. Uh, now, did Ernie live there Ernie as well? Did okay. And so did Harv. Yes. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So it's a, it's, it's a little there. The three of us I paid rent doing elsewhere, but I basically <laughs> was there. They came back from New York. Mm-hmm. And let's do some, let's make a black box in our house. Mm-hmm. And as you know, the property, there's, you know, about it. 
half an acre for parking, and the house is, it's a conglomeration of old two or three different houses all put together. Mm. From the 40s, and it used to be a Bible store, and it used to be several different things. <laughs> but it was all it all it was owned by Catherine Giannopoulos, who was one of the original like feminist artists in Las Vegas. She did the murals at Circus Circus in the sixties, and she wow. has an amazing legacy that's really under um, not a lot of people know about. But it's gone through incarnations, and they did music there for a long time. And Cockroach actually did a show way back in the day, two thousand five. They always refer to it as the junkyard days, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the the backyard there at the cage was eclectic. Yeah, we had uh, several stages. Yeah, uh, it was I had, amazing. I went there once. We had a rehearsal yeah. for Hedwig and the Angry Angels. I was like, "What is this place?" Oh, it's yeah, fantastic it's, it's, to live there. It, it, it's a it's yeah. a place where even if you live there, you probably find new things every, all the time. Every, every single day. day. Yeah, you're like every single. And it oh was the God. frat house for the insane. John D moved in at one point. Eric was there all the time. He was a token <laughs> roommate. Well, that's kind of a cool idea. I have a friend who lives in a house that has another house and another house right there, and <laughs> and it has like a little cul-de-sac <laughs> driveway. Yeah. See, so, you know, what we should do is just buy three houses, put them together, and then put the fence it off. The little the, the driveway. Oh the my gosh! And call it driveway theater. Love it. Uh, this is. Uh, I they, need they, to write they, these ideas down. Uh, the 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 cage the cage was very bohemian, and a lot of inspired art has come out of there. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And and despite the fact that a lot of negative energy did circulate around there at times, um, the the benefit has far outweighed the the negative. Justin, the you're still. Is, Justin, you're still on. I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye, dude, because we can, I feel like we're <laughs> keeping you hanging. <laughs> All right. Well, good time listen. Session. Thanks for calling in and and call in again and see ya um, in in France during Beauty and the Beast. Love you, Justin. You know, no, no, no. Take it nice. easy. Take it easy. <laughs> the KGPA is where uh, Erica and I uh, kind of reconnected, and it's actually one of the reasons why I actually committed to you know not being in the hospitality industry and actually doing uh, what I do now. Thanks, Erica. Aww, Aww. you two are cute. <laughs> I kind of look in love. <laughs> oh, totally, I'm going to call you, it You out. already have the same name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting um, topic because I think in theater in general, everybody's got such an enormous amount of sexual energy. And to channel that into uh, What are you laughing about, energy, Jen? You've never heard of showmances it's before? It's a really important thing to not sleep with each other but actually use that energy to create art you know because it you know and that has been our eight years you can together leave a mess together you know or whatever but leave a mess leave, together leave a mess together or you can create something beautiful you I, know, I, that yeah. will always endure you know yeah anytime anytime like, that happens for me i just go to the artful potter and get it out of my system <laughs> yeah you know what I, I i don't want i don't even want to venture you know I'm not. Even, I'm not even going to finish my thought, Eric. I like leave a mess as a description for this a relationship. This is going to end these ten to midnight shows. <laughs> yeah, because I just had to get that off my chest. Because well, you know, no, but you're not true. True. no, you're you're absolutely correct, and and everyone in this room knows that there is a lot of energy that uh, circulates around the stage. Eric, I, uh, Eric B. Uh, I can't possibly imagine the high school hormones that float around Faith Lutheran. Uh, now, he takes his headphones off, but uh, you've got to. That's got to be something frustrating for you to deal with because you've got students. To manage, to manage. My wife is delivering the chapel message at Faith Lutheran this week, and thank God. No, it's it's, it's serious. Uh, kids are kids. I'm sorry. Whether you believe it, whether energy. whether whether uh, here's my here's my thought on this. I I, I'm, I, I mean we, we only we only have 20 minutes. I think this is an interesting topic. Thanks, Eric Griffin, Griffin for here, here's for my derailing in such a juicy fashion. <laughs> I think <laughs> you want real. This is real. This is real. This is the it's real. Just, real. It's going to get real. This then. is curtain call. Oh, with Eric Eric Ball. Ball. All right. So, I think fundamentally, okay, okay. fundamentally, at its core, people do theater. And do theater, you can just stretch it any way you want. Direct, perform, write, you know, create, uh, build sets for Beauty and the Beast, whatever. People do theater because there's a fundamental void in their life that they need to fill. That void can be acceptance, it can be desire, it can be anything. It could be. But the escape. reason they do theater, I'm escape. Because yeah, that's mine. It could be. Okay. Um, it could be anything. And the reason that they do it is so that they can satisfy it in a way a that need. is healthy, absolutely creative. It is 
And so that's my thesis. Should I ever go back for my master's degree? Oh, thank you. So, so the showmances that occur are because two individuals with like minds that are expressing themselves in a similar fashion find that connection? Um, I think it, it can be, but it's more like a derivative of it. It's not necessarily... I mean, if you're going into theater so that you can hook up with someone, that I, is no, certainly no. a reason to go into theater. Uh, but you know, can... But, I, you, but let me just say, you can also go into theater. You, into you can audition for... The people they want to hook up with. I mean, you can also audition for a show so that you can burn the place to the ground because you're an arsonist. I mean, it just happened. Yeah. I mean, you can you can audition for a show for any reason. But do, do you, know, you ever so. do you ever see that? I mean, I, obviously, you know, I don't it's want you to divulge place. names. But I see that in in high school theater only when they haven't developed um, emotionally to the maturity that this particular role demands, and and, and, and that only is very 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 seldom do because you, I don't put them in like we're doing we're doing. Um, Right now, we're doing Peter Pan. I mean, it's yeah. there's not that opportunity oh, in Pan, Peter Pan. Pan and Tink. Come on, <laughs> they're the gonna get board. it on. Like, no, they're it's called the law. They are not the gonna get it on in the Faith Lutheran <laughs> production of Peter Pan. Let me put it that way. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, but you know what I'm saying? If, Do you know what I'm saying? If you need me to save you, I'll say this. Yeah, hmm. are, you, are you building a clock tower? Because <laughs> that's where it could happen. So. Erica, uh, Erica and I, I would say that Erica, for me, has been one of the great romances of my life. Um, but it, is, it has always been um, this very platonic and mm -hmm. highly creative mm -hmm. relationship. Uh, she's also of respect, one of the right? greatest creative yeah. collaborators I've ever uh, worked with. And it's why, you know, when I got artistic director with Cockroach Theater back in February, one of the first things I thought of was, Man, we need a resident playwright, and wouldn't it be awesome if uh, Ms. Erica Griffin was on board with us? Well, and can I say something though? That's that's kind of like my wife and I. We're very opposite. Mm -hmm. We're we, you know hot and cold, hot every, every you know. But we work. You know, we're looking at thirteen years of marriage here. We we, we work. You know, that's why companies work. They complement each other. Mm -hmm. You know, they fulfill each other's you know. They weaknesses. have a long term. Right. Well, and and, and yeah. I think I think that's I think that's something that you've hit on. Granted, it's not quite at the midnight hour. You should have saved that comment because I think something that Cockroach has hit on uh -huh. is exactly that they have brought in people that right. complement each other, a and over the years, you all have worked with each other at different levels, a and I, I I think what you guys are bringing together is an understanding between each other professionally uh, to where. You can say I love this person because I I respect what they do, yeah. uh, and, and that's what's going to. But make I'll tell you right now, I would rather work. That's what's going to make the cockroach survive. Oh wow, that was yeah. cool. And, and it's three D. Really well played. It's three D. Just well played. Three D. Live theater is three D. And here's the thing: I'm not saying at a high school level. I'm just saying in a general. Um, kind of way. As a director, I would rather work with people that I know are going to compliment me and compliment others in a project more than I, I... I mean, you need to fulfill the demands of the show talent-wise, however you want to perceive that, but but I really am all about bringing together an ensemble that's going to complement each other. Mm -hmm. You have to. Well, and I think that you know what we're doing at, at, at Cockroach Theater is um, I hope that we are putting out uh, a, a kind of perception that we're about discipline and rigor and passion for yeah. each project. And I think that in doing that, then when we work with new people, mm -hmm. the new people with an expectation of discipline and a passion and rigor, that we will have that ensemble. We won't go through a kind of dramatic like moment of like, are you in my clique or not? No, right, right, are right, you right. into it? Yeah. And that's what, what the founding members established. And, and that, that's what, that. who, yeah, are, totally. who are the founding members? Because it, Cockroach has been around for a decade. Yeah, oh, here it's comes Will Adamson, it's Levi Fackrell, <laughs> Ernie Curcio, Barb Rollins, John is, Lorenz, is there any part of Sean is, is there any part of all of this? Because I thought he's... He uh, just moved back yeah. to New York. Yeah, he just moved back to uh, and Savannah wishes, and then to New York. Um, you know, he... Uh, you know, I, I talked with Ernie a lot through this whole process because I was just so honored to become part of the... Uh, officially part of the Cockroach family when I did. And, uh, you know, Ernie's meant a lot to me. And so... Uh, it was great to be able to talk with him, and he's on his journey now. Good. Journey east. 
<laughs> but but, but it, and by East I mean like the Eastern United States. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but, but not in that criminal kind of way. <laughs> as far as far Abu Dhabi. As, uh, right. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> bell. Hit the bell. Well yeah. as, as far as cockroaches concerned, this is not something that has just transpired overnight. This is a long process. Absolutely. And 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 and, and, and the a, core and the core group that you have right growing. now. Yeah. Um, I was one of the first people they brought in. Who who brought you in? I mean, who who was the who was the one that said, "Let's finally put this down. Let's let's stop floating around and you know, floating around. What, uh, I like make that. it happen." Well, well I was yeah. um, I was cast by Jason DeFritis. He was the original artistic director, and in Caligula. I, when I first saw Line, I felt like I was watching this exciting basketball game. I just wanted to get up there and play with them. I was such a big fan of Cockroach, and, but I knew that they were the UNLV students, and they had sure. history yeah. together. But I learned very quickly that they wanted like-minded individuals to help grow the company. And when I went to audition, I was just so floored that I got the role and was became a huge champion for them. I got to write with them in workshops and work on several projects, and I'm just happy to be on board. Yeah, and for you know, for me, um, uh, Erica introduced me to Cockroach Theater, and then in in, in uh, back in two thousand five, and in learning about Cockroach, I got to know Levi, and then over the years we kind of surrounded each other, and then a few years back when I was working primarily as Born and Raised Productions, we uh, collaborated on uh, Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, and then I acted in the Flu Season, and then. Um, at the beginning of this year, I was individually trying to figure out how to turn um, uh, Born and Race Productions into a, less of a nomadic troupe and more of a hey, you can have a season package. Well, and, that, and, and, that, just and like, I guess that's not what led the question. Figuring, yeah, yeah it, not not <laughs> figuring it out at all. But I was working on it, and then Levi called me up one day and he said, "Hey, man, what are you up to? Um, by the way, we're going to do a theater downtown." Um, a project that apparently he had been working on with uh, Brett mm-hmm. Sperry of the Art Square Complex um, and Artifice and Brett Wesley mm-hmm. Gallery um, for quite a few years. Um, it was starting to come to fruition. And with that on the horizon, um, the core players of Cockroach Theater decided that if they were about to make that real step forward, they needed to expand their base and they needed to really restructure the company so that it was a company built for the future. And you know, and I saw that when um, our second meeting, he and I were talking, and I said, you know what, no matter what happens, I want to be at this new theater. And he mm-hmm. said, well, what do you think about being artistic director? And I asked him, well, would I be managing director also? And he said, no, I'd be managing director, you'd be artistic director. And when he set up that structure, where you kind of divide the ego, right? And really, yeah, I, set I it think up. that's where well, he's getting into trouble. Well, well, they've got they try to run all. That's exactly my point. The, the, the ego, the ego is divided and, like seven yeah. ways with with cockroaches. Yeah, and now, it, yeah, and we we have, we have parceled it out so that there's no one person who is like this is what it is. Mm-hmm. And artistically, I am the advocate for what we are doing artistically, and I don't have to worry about the budgets because right. I know that Levi is going to keep me honest. And Can I tell you something? When you have that partnership. You have to rely on one another. One another. Well, then exactly. there's your there's your it's ensemble amazing. reference from 15 minutes. Ago. Relying on others is the most powerful thing that we have. To have each other's back oh, and to and to must, and to must have each other's back. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is one thing, but to rely on that must have each other's back over a period of time. I mean, 10 years now we're looking at cockroach. Yeah. I mean, for crying out loud, you, something's going right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like I don't know. You, you are you are a, an overnight success after what? ten years. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, isn't that always the case? Always the case. Yeah. We have to get our, put our roots down. You know, we well, were nomadic. And and uh, uh, but you have a history of uh, of, of wonderful you know productions uh, along the way, and obviously the experience of everything uh, coming in together. Because I know that you know, born and raised is still kind of. In, in existence, in the sense of some of the things that you're already committed to. Yeah, I mean, Born and Raised Productions still exists. We still do programming at the Arts Factory. We'll still be uh, producing uh, the producers at Cedar Summer Theater with Joe Hines. Yay, next year! Bell. 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 You need to hit that bell. bell. Thank you, Joe Hines. Uh, <laughs> you should every ding and just say, like, senior portrait. <laughs> but, um, 
Uh, it, the seniors out of this. It, yeah, it, um, you know, kidding. when the opportunity with Cockroach Theater came about, um, oh, working with Cockroach Theater and working in this amazing space at the Art Square Theater, which if you have not seen it, it's oh yeah, I, I haven't I seen it in a couple of weeks, there. but yeah, um, it, it you um, right, right, I love it there. Uh, you know, it, it it puts me years ahead of mm -hmm. anything I imagined I could do. And, uh, and we're all now doing together, and we're creating a platform for lots of people to That's come cool. and create with us. So uh, it's, it, it, is, it is one of the great successes of my life at every level. And, and, and here's the and, thing, and, and it's good to see it because uh, I've known you for a couple of years, and it's, and it's really good to see this Eric. Um, Shucks, Glenn. Yeah. Aww. Now I actually do want to make out with you. Oh, oh I knew, good lord. I knew it would Please come around. for us to leave the room first. <laughs> By the way, for the record, yeah. while I have had this romance with Erica, she and I have never and likely will never do it. <laughs> well, they're, they're, okay. For the record, Thanks for clearing that up. now you don't have to put it in the description you know, for YouTube. I, I wish I, well, you know, I wish I had the time to produce the video with like little VH1 pop-outs. <laughs> oh yeah, I wish I, I, I wish I had the time, and and some days I do. I am so glad you don't, though. Can you imagine what you pop up in my head all the time? No, no I don't want to know what I pop up in your head all no. the time. <laughs> no, I mean what you would. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, no. <laughs> No, no, no. So, anyways, raising chains. <laughs> do we need to take another commercial break? We got ten minutes left. Seriously, do we? Dad, you know, hasn't, Dad yeah. hasn't come in in a while. He must no, be sleeping. He'd be, be fine. No, I think we're good. So, if you're just now tuning in, we should probably. Are really? Explain. Are you just now, you're tuning, just now in tuning in to in. AM 1400? If you are just now tuning in, thanks for coming off of your shift at the well, AM PM. <laughs> Yeah. You know who's who's coming off. You know who's tuning in at ten to midnight. Do you hey, call in now? Hold on, We're hold on. Wait, wait. Right now. We want to know who you are. All the people are going to tune in thirty seconds from now. Let's give them the sports scores. All right. If you are watching the 49ers game today, they defeated the Minnesota Vikings fifty-three to zero. That's totally made up. That's yeah, not it is, at all. It is completely oh, okay. Made up. I was going to say that was Did just because that, that was just about. One I just person realized that, how much I definitely had a matinee today. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that football happened. That's how focused well, I've been. Well, the, ni the, nin the Niners lost uh, to the Vikings. Wait a minute, which is a huge, like, crazy upset. Jen, I, it was a good game, though. Football is that it's oblong one, one, right? Foreign language to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the one It's not the one where they it's kick the It's not the, the one with the dimples that you put oh. on the tee. Well, you do put them on a tee. Oh, chai tea? What are we talking about? Earl wow. Grey. Wow. Starbucks? Starbucks. Are we... Are the we, last name is... We're Paul. regressing. Give a crap oh, we're, we're, we're going back in time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to Curtain Call. We have some guests with us tonight. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, the listen. I, 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 I think, think we need to go through Erica's cards because I, she spent all this yes. time no, writing no, things no, on the yeah. back of recipe cards. I mean, are they recipe cards? They are because they have forks, knives, and... So... No, no, no. The beauty beauty first note is... My name is Erica Griffin. The guy next to me is Eric Amblad. That's awesome. This is why I love you, Erica. Aww. There's even a blank card in there. Here. The top one. Give me one. Tension <laughs> is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. Oh, that's a note to actors. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. I, I just I, wanted no, to share no, the love. I, I think we should read some of these because you spent the time <laughs> writing these no, things no. out. In preparation of basically Eric and I not having anything prepared to ask you. You know, I, I will say this. I, uh, you mentioned something about the crew earlier, and um, it, it, I, I was starkly reminded of that this weekend at Nurture at the Art Square Theater, produced by Cockroach Theater. Go to cockroachtheater.com for tickets right now. Anyway, um, you also do movie fun on the weekend. <laughs> In the world <laughs> without theater at a time. Wow. Without actors. That's pretty good. That's that's actually, I was just going to say, that's actually pretty good. The cockroaches took over. The cockroaches emerged. It was a nuclear war, and the only thing that survived was them. They were all marshmallow Eric. peeps. <laughs> really? Can I get you to do my voicemail? Wow. All right, Mine here's too. a card. I <laughs> she just took the mic away and said, no, no. She said, no okay, more Okay, I'm a writer. You well, know, yeah. Playwrights invent I, well, words, that's why, but they're that's like why, new words. Yeah. So that's why I, I'd like you to read what you actually wrote. I just want to write, I want to tell you some of the words that I've been trying to slip into my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. One of them is disaster bait. 
That's a great word. Disaster bait? Yes. I want to hear. I've been oh, in. I've been in shows I've, where I've, it was strictly. I've never had a problem with that. Masturbation. It's it's never been a problem. It's like a Godzilla adult film. I, I'd like to know. You know, no. I, how many guys have ever had a disasturbation problem? Oh wow. Don't uh, answer that. Don't answer that. It's the next one. It's called Don't lonely answer. booking. It's when you're on Facebook and you keep doing status updates. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you wait. You, you just gave them the copyright on that. No, uh, no, no, no. It no, happens I didn't all the time. time. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, no, I, 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 we never got the definition of disaster bait. Yeah. I think it. I think you did. It is. All that, right. Um, that's one sad. Is, I used this one and experimented. Chronoptimist. Somebody who thinks time is going to get better for them? Things that they're going to be on time. Oh, <laughs> they're running okay. late. Oh, chronoptim... Chronop what? Chronoptimist. Chronoptimist. Uh, it was also a character in the most recent Transformers film. Oh. oh. Chronoptimist Prime. Oh, Give Lord. me that. All right, how about <sighs> this? Ding! <laughs> Bropology. That's when two bros apologize to each other. Bropology. That's uh, stretching it. I don't know about that one. Okay, okay. You okay. Owe me... <laughs> <laughs> um, and a bro apology. So to to finish my uh, my kind of earlier thought about uh, nurture, so that, that didn't sound like just a lame plug. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to give a huge um, thank you to Natalie Senecal and Christopher Duncan and Damn. Vanessa Villanueva and Daryl the Machine Garnett <laughs> uh, and Melissa Webb Finley. Uh, they are the people who are running the show mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And I honestly do not know how we would run without them. That's awesome. They have been absolutely incredible, and they make me feel spoiled that they have decided to offer their passion to what we are doing. That's it's, awesome. It's incredible. So I wanted to make yeah. sure I got that out. Nice. Congratulations yeah. to them too, because they, they deserve just yeah. so much to, to, every, to everyone behind the scenes. Um, well, thank you. And speaking of behind the scenes, we are going to have to wrap up. Um, if you, you you just now joined us, or if you're or if you've been listening for the last. Uh, Half hour or so. We're talking with Erica Griffin and Eric. Half Adam hour. Lab. It's been two hours, bro. No, I'm just saying. If you need, just, a, you need to give me a break. Within, within the last half hour. Because oh. that's the last time I mentioned it. Okay, because otherwise you'd have Ish. to give the audience a propology. Oh, no. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> this, 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 no. No, I was going to say. They obviously are not chronoptimists. No. If they're they may be, they, in the game. You know, if they're, if they're listening right now, they, they probably failed it, you know. And the disaster uh, base. I was just gonna say, you're gonna say it. Bring it. Theatrical Bring it. blue balls. That's the term. Oh, wow. Well, it, it, listen, Curtain Call with Eric Ball is on every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. Or was. Tonight, tonight was an exception because of programming. Um, the Dodger game and the Dodger post game, they had to move some stuff around on the schedule. So we really appreciate it if you joined us this evening. But we ask you to join us every Sunday from 6 to 8. And if you can't join us on Sundays from 6 to 8 because you're busy doing other stuff, um, go to YouTube and check out, you know, search Curtain Call with Eric Ball. Yeah. Look at all. Glenn does an amazing job I, I at archiving all of our stuff, and uh, he does a great production values on it, so it's really actually kind of fun to watch. Yeah, I try. Um, yeah. And so we can watch all the different shows and catch up. Uh, please, if you're involved in a production or something, put links to these things. So, you know, Glenn and I, and, and thank you, Jen, for being here. We love it when you join us. Yeah, um, Jen. The reason why we do this is because we hope to get more patrons in the seats of theaters and get the word out on the street about theater. This is why we're here. And, and um, so anything you can do to help us with our efforts, like our Facebook page. You know, um, just tune in when we when we do shows. Yeah, and, and give us some, give us some feedback too. Uh, I mean, Eric, Eric and I love doing this because it's fun. Uh, it's lots of fun. I, it's lots of fun. But we love it's to hear from you too. Voice. So please, uh, please tune in. In a um, world. <laughs> oh Lord. So, anyways, <laughs> thanks for joining us. This has been Curtain Call um, for our producer Chris Scott, Glenn Heath, Jen Delatory, who I adore and love, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Eric Amblad and Erica Griffin and Cockroach Theater <laughs> in general. We thank hope to you. see you Show in the for audience. Now. And uh, we'll hope to see you next time with Curtain Call with Eric Bob. Take Have a good night, folks.
That was Yay, awesome, that was the guys. Most fun I've ever had on the I <laughs> think that was great. I bombed on NPR once. I bombed so bad. I did too. Oh, oh, I don't know. Like, Something about Ian Milchrist. He, he was like, like weird. Who was that mean. British guy? Yeah. yeah, he's that weird. British I was talking guy. about the goat, which is a Is he really subject. British? Do we know that for sure? Fake. <laughs> Makes me feel better. And then he edited it, he edited oh, it later anyway. Oh man, yeah, what's that? Yeah, um, oh, that was fun. Working. Thank you guys a lot. Oh my gosh, it was a pleasure. It was lots of fun. We had a good time. <laughs> any, any, any time we can invade your space, I had good a great time. time oh my god, good. I'm so glad we had a super great time with us. Yeah. All right, well, and, and, and anytime you need to do a 10 to 12 show, say oh, goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie.